Utah Valley is coming off a walloping at the hands of UC Irvine. Today, the Wolverines turn to their hard-throwing right-hander Paxton Schultz as they look to get back on track against the 22nd-ranked team in the country. It's UC Irvine and Utah Valley next on UVU TV. Welcome in to UCCU Ballpark. I'm Jordan Bianucci alongside Ryan Pickens as Utah Valley gets set for game two against the 22nd ranked UC Irvine Anteaters. And Ryan, the Anteaters this season have really pitched the ball well. Last night they threw a one hit shutout against the Wolverines. Anytime you have the dominant pitching that we've seen UC Irvine have, not just last night, but throughout the entire course of the season, it's going to change things. When you look at some of these numbers entering the weekend, eighth in the NCAA in shutouts. They got another one last night. They're at four. Hits allowed per nine innings. Those strikeout to walk ratios big right there for this Irvine pitching staff. You're going to have a tough time scoring runs against them, which only helps the Ant Eaters be able to score runs. They don't have to score 10 runs a ball game to win, Jordan. They can score two or three and have a great shot to win. Well, one guy for Utah Valley who has been swinging the bat well this season is the center fielder, Michael Beltran. Yeah, Beltran coming into to this ball game today, hitting 356, no home runs with five RBIs, an on-base percentage of over 500 right now, really setting the tone at the top of the lineup for Utah Valley going to have to have a big game today and really get back to the traditional leadoff hitter. Take some pitches, find a way to get on base, and hopefully jumpstart this UVU offense. Indeed. UC Irvine and Utah Valley from UCCU Ballpark coming up after this. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. I decided to go to college to further my education and define my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself, both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone, whether that be professors, my teammates, or other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell, and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it. Welcome back to Orem as Utah Valley gets ready to take on UC Irvine. The Wolverines have just taken the field, and with that, I'll send it over to Ryan with the UC Irvine lineup. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup for UC Irvine. The Anteaters coming in with a record of 10-4. and four. Jake Palmer leads it off. Mikey Falia hits in the two spot. Brandon Lewis had a great night last night for UC Irvine hitting third. Adrian Domla, the cleanup hitter. Matt Riatano, the uh, cat caught last night. He'll DH today. Jacob Castro will catch hitting sixth. Uh, Christian Cost, the shortstop, hitting seventh. Brendan Brooks, eighth. And then Mikey Peabody, the right fielder, will hit ninth. Uh, Paxton Schultz, the right-hander for Utah Valley, will get the start. Schultz 0-2 on the year, making his fifth start, has one complete game, 26 innings pitch with a 5.06 ERA. Opponents hitting 260 off the right-hander, who will put in about three or four different pitches tonight. We'll see a lot of fastball slider today, Jordan, and we'll see what Paxton can do against this tough UC Irvine lineup. First pitch fastball right there on the outside corner called for a strike. First pitch at 2.04 here in Orm. The game time temperature about 45 degrees, but sunny. Fastball in there for a called strike two. The left-handed hitting Palmer, hitting 261 on the year. Six RBIs, no home runs. The pitch to him, a swing and a ground ball to second. Hall up with it, and there is one away. And Ryan, it is really important for the Wolverines to get through this first inning today. Yeah, it, Utah Valley's played from behind a lot this year, and a lot of it has come in that first inning. And the biggest thing 
that's hurt as we take a look at Paxton Schultz in those four starts, 26 and two-thirds innings, six walks and 28 strikeouts, which you love. You can't beat yourself, and we saw that Utah Valley in game one last night beat themselves with a lot of walks and hit by pitches. First pitch, check swing. A foul at home plate off the bat of Felia. It's 0-1. Mikey Felia, the right-handed hitter, hitting 188 on the year. He does have a home run, eight RBIs last night. He went one for five. UC Irvine absolutely pounded Utah Valley last night, 15 to nothing. The 0-1 is swung on and missed, a 93-mile-an-hour fastball, and it's quickly 0-2. So early on, Schultz showing that velocity. This is a big start, I feel like, for Paxton Schultz. His final tune-up before WAC play. And he really wants to, I think, end the non-conference season on a high note. Malia takes a fastball that just missed outside. A good-looking pitch there from Schultz. The Wolverines need to do everything better. Last night they were one hit. The one-two pitch is swung on and lined up the middle base hit. So the Anteaters right back at it this afternoon. And that will bring up Brandon Lewis. And this is one thing here. There's the, I think that was the changeup actually that, with that sinking motion and Felia just takes it right back up through the middle. Last night UC Irvine, the first time this year they recorded over 10 hits in a ball game. So it's something to keep in mind. This is a team that hasn't maybe swung the bat as well as they've pitched, but this is a team that, sh that showed last night they're very capable of swinging the bats. First pitch to Lewis is swung on and missed. You know that, that hit that Valia just lined up the middle, it really wasn't a bad pitch. That changeup was on the outside, and Valia did a nice job just to go get it. 0-1 here to Lewis, a right-handed hitter. Schultz throws, and the ball misses down low. Another fastball, it's 1-1. One one. A sunshiny but chilly afternoon here in Orem. Blue skies above. Schultz from the stretch. Here it comes, a swing and a miss. That was a challenge fastball right at the knees. We welcome you in if you're watching on UVU TV or listening on GoUVU.com. Jordan Bianucci alongside Ryan Pickens. UC Irvine, Irvine coming in with a 10 and four record. The Wolverines three and 14 as a fastball misses upstairs. Two and two to Lewis. UC Irvine ranked 22. Polson holding on the runner at first. Thalia has stolen a base this season. He's attempted just to steal the one. The 2-2. Two -two. Fastball misses down low and the count runs full. We talked a lot about last night. Jordan, you and I talked before the ball game about making sure one thing they had to do is avoid the free passes in this ball game. And you have to be careful with a 3-2 pitch to Lewis because he, sh he has the power, and this is one of the big guys UC Irvine relies on, the middle part of the lineup. You don't want to get behind where you have to feel like you have to come over the plate with a fastball. We've, we have seen mostly fastballs from Schultz early on. No score, top of the first inning, a man on, a man out. The pitch, there goes the runner, a swing and a miss. It squirts out of the glove of Sims, so Felia takes second. That should be a stolen base, but the first strikeout for Schultz, and they're two away. So here's Domla. And Ryan, how many times have we seen this situation in the first inning with Utah Valley? A man in scoring position with two outs, the Wolverines just haven't been able to shut the opponent down. It hurt him in the game against BYU a couple of weeks back, that series with St. Mary's. I mean, you go back, it's been a kind of a really hard spot for Utah Valley, and I think maybe it's just taking a, a step back and just being like, okay, we're going to get out of this. Domless swings and grounds one to first. Polson has it. He will underhand to Schultz, covering, and the inning is over. A nice job by Schultz and the Wolverines. A hit, a man left, no runs. We head to the last of the first. It's nothing, nothing. I hate math. I can't count how many times I've heard people say that. And as a math teacher, I take it personally. So, while working on my master's at UVU, I developed ways to help kids not hate math. 
Does engaged learning make a difference? You do the math. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Hyundai. I promise you'll love it. Get more vehicle for your dollar from Utah's largest Hyundai dealer. Drive home a new 2019 Hyundai Tucson for only $199 a month, or you'll love the new Elantra for only $13,990. Go ahead and compare at MurdochHyundai.com. You gotta come and see us in Logan, Linden, and Murray. No score between UC Irvine and Utah Valley as we head to the last of the first inning. And Ryan, I'll send it over to you with the UVU lineup. A couple of changes today for Utah Valley from what we saw last night. Michael Beltran will lead it off in center field. Cody Hall hits in the two spot. Alexander Marco now up in the three spot. It will be Drew Sims hitting cleanup. Nick Madsen in at third base today hitting fifth. Kate Polson sixth. Jake Plakis will hit in the seventh spot. The DH will be Payson Hayes. And then Trevor Howell in the ninth spot here for the Wolverines. The Wolverines will face the right-hander Tanner Brubaker today. Here is Beltran to lead things off. Brubaker working from the windup. Fastball misses outside, ball one. Brew, uh, Brubaker on the year, one and one, making his fifth start of the year with a 2.16 ERA, 25 innings. Four walks to 19 strikeouts, Jordan. UC Irvine does not do you very many favors with this pitching staff as a hitter. So a fastball misses there, and it's 2-0. and oh. No favors at all. Brubaker's had a really great year. And the Wolverines, we mentioned in the top of the first, they had just one hit last night and a 15 to nothing loss. The 2-0 comes up and in, and it's 3-0. To Beltran. We'll see the fastball curveball slider changeup. Four pitch mix from Brew Baker. He will re really rely on that fastball slider. Utah Valley trying to get the bats going. Beltran, their best hitter this season. The 3 0 pitch to him. The fastball's poured in there, and it's 3 and 1. Beltran hitting 356. He has had three triples on the year, no home runs. Five men batted home. Brubaker peers over the glove. Now he winds and fires. And there's a swing and a high fly ball into right field. It will be Peabody, and Beltran is retired for the first out of the last of the first inning. So here is Cody Hall. Hall went 0 for 4 last night. The only man to come up with a base hit last night for the Wolverines was Ty Vargas, freshman. He is not in the lineup this afternoon. The pitch to Hall is swung on and lifted high into right center field. Moving over is Falia. It's going to be Peabody, though, who makes the grab, and they're quickly two away in this first inning. And this is the thing we talked about last night, Jordan, is as a hitter against a good pitcher like Baker or Palante like we saw last night. What's your approach? Do you make him work and try to get into the bullpen? It kind of seems like Utah Valley's been aggressive early in the count, which is which is fine if you're getting base hits, but if you're not getting those hits, Jordan, it's gonna keep these, these starting pitchers um, in the ball game much longer. First pitch to Hall is taken for a ball, a fastball at 91 missed outside. Well, usually Paul Estrada would be hitting in the three spot, but last night a fastball came up and in and hit him on the wrist, and he is out today. We saw him before the ball game. That wrist was really swollen, but he should be back in a couple games, not too long as a ball misses low and away. 2-0 to Hall. Yeah, Estrada was telling us last night he was looking curveball, He'd seen a lot of curveballs in his first two at bats, and, and a fastball came in, and there's not much you can do. It just plunked him. And he stayed in the game, but then came out later defensively. There's a swing and a high fly ball to left. Palmer on the track, looking up. It's gone! A home run for Cody Hall, and it's one to nothing, Utah Valley. Alexander, Cody Hall's good friend, Alexander Marco. 
<laughs> that one just didn't. I wasn't sure how much carry it would have Jordan, but here's the difference between playing last night to today, the night game versus the day game. Here's one in the day game where maybe he's not going to get out all the time, but here it just finds a way over the fence. I wasn't sure if Palmer was going to have a play on that one. Here's the first pitch to Drew Sims, another good friend of Cody Hall's, and a strike is in there on the outside corner. That is one of those balls. You mentioned, Ryan, that this ballpark, you can get one up. It may fly out of here just 3.05 down the left field line. Here is the 0-1 to Sims. Curve ball. This is down and away, and it's one and one. I don't think that one got out, Jordan, by very much over that um, over that fence. Just watching it, um, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a home run or that long fly ball because we've seen some before where they get just right up against the wall and they're able to make the catch. There's a fly ball into right field, right at Peabody, and the Wolverines are retired. But they get one run on a solo shot off the bat of Alexander Marco. Utah Valley leads one to nothing as we head to the second on UVU TV. Here at Intermountain Healthcare, our doctors have experience treating young athletes, professional athletes, and the athlete next door. We treat everyday injuries, sports injuries, concussions, total joint replacements, and everything in between. Come visit our board certified physicians and surgeons here at Intermountain Healthcare's Utah Valley Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. We're committed to keeping you moving. Eyes on me. I'm Mark Pope, coach of the UVU men's basketball team. I want to thank Carlos Iglesias and Ken Garf Volkswagen for being a great friend of Utah Valley University Athletics. Basketball, volleyball, and everything else. Thanks, coach. We're proud to support a great program like Utah Valley University Sports. We wish the Wolverines a fantastic season. You can thank Carlos, too, by visiting their new dealership today. Ken Garf Volkswagen. We, we hear you. you. Well, Alexander Marco goes deep in the last of the first, and the Wolverines have their first lead of the series, their first run of the series, and that is exactly what Paxton Schultz needed as you see him out on the mound. They're getting set to take the hill. In inning number two, it'll be Ritano, Castro, and Koss for UC Irvine. And it's a lot different for Paxton Schultz, Jordan, going out there now pitching with that one run lead where the worst case scenario is you make a mistake and someone ties the game with one swing of the bat, you'd be amazed at the confidence that you can have with that than going, hey, we didn't score last night and if I, we get behind, it might be hard for us to score runs. How much more pressure that's going to put on Paxton Schultz? Well, and I think along with that, a, a run gives Schultz some energy out there. It gives this club some energy. Here's a pop-up. On the right side of the infield, it is going to be Cody Hall, a major league pop-up, and there's one away. Rotano is retired on one pitch. That get, I mean, if it gives us some energy in the booth, it has to give the Wolverines some energy on the field. They have really struggled this season, especially the last couple weeks. And you think about it, even a win like this, you have the number 22 team in the country. Here is Jacob Castro, a fastball misses away. You have the number 22 team in the country in your home park. A win like this can really kind of transform your season, give you more confidence to say, hey, we can play good baseball, we can play against good teams. And you put a guy like Paxton Schultz out there, who you know is going to probably keep you in the ball game. That's what he's done all year long. Puts Utah Valley in a much better position. The 1-1 coming to Castro. Fastball just misses outside, and it's 2-1. Castro getting his first start of this series. The sophomore, in just 17 at-bats this season, has two hits. Bent at the knees, the 2-1 to him is swung on and tapped foul at home plate. There was the off-speed pitch, one of the first we've seen from Schultz. I think that may have been the slider. 2-2. Two and two. One to nothing, Utah Valley. We're in the top of the second inning. One out, nobody on. Fastball misses outside, and it's three and two. Castro, the sophomore out of Oxnard, 
Oxnard, California, I beg your pardon. Rio Mesa High School, a swing and a foul ball. Hooking out of play down the left field line onto the grassy berm. The wind currently lazily blowing in from right field. We'll see that wind shift throughout the afternoon. 3-2 pitch, misses high and away, not close from Schultz and there is a one out walk. And here is Christian Koss. Next up for the Anteaters, number 27, Christian Koss. UC Irvine has not really scalded the ball this year. That was not the case last night. They scored 15 runs. The Wolverines trying to slow down those bats. Polson holding on the runner. Koss, a right-handed hitter, closed stance. Swing and a miss, a big cut there from Koss at a 92 mile an hour fastball. Koss hitting 231 on the season. He does have two home runs, nine RBIs. Schmidt looking for that double play ball. Taking his time. Now he comes home. And the one strike fastball's right there on the inside corner. That one clocked at 94 miles an hour. I would imagine Paxton Schultz maybe might be a little more amped up today. Pitching in his home ballpark, ranked team coming in. And sometimes as a pitcher, when that happens, it kind of gets that velocity, maybe an increased mile an hour or two than what you're used to seeing. A throw over to first base. Castro back in diving. He has been thrown out one time this year trying to steal a bag. He's 0 for 1. Ooh, a fastball comes in and hits Koss in the middle of the back, in the middle of the back. And that is a huge mistake from Schmidt. As you take a look, just a fastball in between the numbers. That will not feel good. And that one just totally got away from Schmidt. Sims wanted that one on the outside corner. So now there are two men on with just one man out. Here is Brendan Brooks. The right-handed hitting sophomore, hitting 224. So Schmidt throws, and a fastball misses down low, ball one. And we talked to associate head coach Dave Carter before the game, Ryan, and he told us one thing. He goes, you cannot defend against walks and hit batsmen. It was interesting because he said even against a home run, you can defend. And I was kind of puzzled at first until he explained that you can at least chase into the warning track and maybe have a play on it. But, and that's the tough part is now because you think of it, instead of being maybe two outs and Eric Madsen going out early on and having a conversation here with Paxton Schultz, instead of it being a situation now, say runner on second with two outs on a ground ball potentially, now it's runners on first and second with one out. You put a good speed, you put good speed on over at first base, a ball in the gap now and it changes the ball game. So just the littlest things that you wouldn't necessarily think about in baseball can really come back to hurt you really quickly. And right now, I think a great visit early on by Eric Madsen to come out and just kind of calm the nerves a little bit here with Paxton Schultz. And I think this tells you that already we're in just the top of the second and it's one to nothing UVU, but this is a big moment in this ball game. Madsen sees here that a base hit in the alleyway this is how the Wolverines have lost games early on this season, giving up big innings early on. Schultz retired the first man he faced in this inning. Since then, he's walked a man and hit a batter. Brooks from the right side, the 2-0 coming to him. Fastball swung on and hammered into right center field. Beltran moving over. He will get there and make the grab. The runners did not tag. They will head back, and that's a big second out for Paxton Schultz. So two away. Now and Mike Peabody will come to the plate. Mike Peabody. This is just the 11th game Peabody has played in, just the seventh start he's had. No homers, five RBIs. He is eight for 24 on the year. One of four left-handed hitters in this lineup. 
for the Anteaters. There's a foul off to the left. Fastball at 91 from Schmidt. One to nothing, Utah Valley. Two men on, two men out. Schultz into his stretch. The one strike pitch misses down low. It's one and one. Schultz has gone mostly fastball through the first time of the, the first time through this order. Yeah, which will be interesting to see because you go the second time and you start getting that third time through, you really need to be able to to use multiple pitches to try to get get hitters out. The 1-1, one, one. a swing and a foul off the glove of Sims, and it's a 1-2. and two. I will say, Schultz has had a good fastball with some relatively good movement today, and UC Irvine hasn't really gotten a lot of great swings on, on the fastball yet. They haven't really t quite timed it. So it'll be interesting to see if he can get that slider going here the second time through the order. He could cause some uh, some problems for the ant eater uh, hitters today. Peabody looking to tie this ball game. Toss at first, Castro at second, the one-two pitch. A fastball misses high and away, and it's two balls, two strikes. Schmidt rubbing up that baseball. He has not thrown as many pitches as you might think as he's had three base runners through two innings. He's at 33 pitches, but they have been fairly stressful pitches. The two-two, a swing and a ground ball to the backhand of Hall, and he's not going to get there into center field. Castro will come in to score. We are tied at one. Peabody with the RBI single, a two-out base hit. Koss heads to third. And the lineup turns over. Seven to the plate for the Anteaters, number 28, Jake Palmer. That's a great job by Castro there, just reading it all the way, picking up the base coach and saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to head on in to score. I mean, and that's just great fundamental base running there by Castro. Uh, and there, I mean, he's going to score on that base hit. Pretty easy there to center field. And he doesn't even, with two outs, doesn't even have to pick up the baseball off the bat. As soon as it, he hears the crack of the bat, he's off and running. As Sims steps out in front of home plate, puts on a variety of signs. Peabody at first base, Koss at third. So... Here is Palmer. He bounced out back in the first inning. Schmidt trying to limit the damage. There goes the runner. He stays put after bluffing as if to take off. Fastball misses. It's a 1-0. Oh. Olsen holding on the runner at first. That is Peabody. He has stolen two bases this season. 1-0. Fastball misses high and away. 2-0. So Schultz in some danger here. Two men on, two men out. 1-1 one one our score. Fastball is in the dirt. And it's 3-0. Nice job by Sims to smother that and keep Koss at third base. So we'll see if Palmer is taking all the way here. Schultz ready. Here it comes. Fastball. Misses inside. And the bases are loaded. The third free pass now of the inning given by Schultz, by and the Wolverines are going to get somebody going in the bullpen. That is Cole Yoakum, the freshman, heading down there to get loose. I don't know how, I think Eric Madsen may have a quicker hook than normal in a game like today. I don't think he wants this one to get, get away from Utah Valley early on. It doesn't get easier here with Falia coming to the plate. He swings and hits one deep down the right field line. On the track, Alexander, it is foul. Just barely. So 
So just a long strike off the bat of Falia, who singled off of Schultz last inning. He is one for one. That is Koss at third base. Peabody at second, Palmer at first. One to one, top of the second inning. One run in here for UC Irvine. A swing and a miss at a high fastball, and it's nothing in two. So right here, Schultz does not need to throw a strike. In fact, he probably doesn't want to. Just a tempting pitch off the plate. Try to get Thalia to chase. Schultz peers in, Sims drops the sign. The 0-2, a swing and a fly ball into shallow left. Coming in is Plakus, but it'll be Howell, the shortstop, and the inning is over. So Schultz gives up just the one run. UC Irvine leaves them loaded. We head to the last of the second. It's Utah Valley 1, UC Irvine 1. I decided to go to college to further my education and define my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself, both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone, whether that be professors, my teammates, other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell, and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it. One to one our score as we head to the last of the second inning. Jordan Bianucci alongside Ryan Pickens. A pleasure to have you with us on the audio side or on UVU TV. A beautiful day for baseball. You see the right-hander, Tanner Brubaker out there for UC Irvine. He gave up a solo home run to Alexander Marco in the first inning. It will be Mick Matson to lead things off for Utah Valley. Here in the second, the pitch. And a ball misses outside to Matson. The son of head coach Eric Matson. See hitting 214 on the season. He has not had a ton of starts. This is just the seventh game he started in 2019. The 1-0 pitch is chopped toward third. Charging is Lewis. He makes the play. And there is one away. So Kate Polson will come up with the bases empty. Ryan Alexander hit the home run back in the first inning, but the Wolverines have yet to put the right-hander into his stretch, and they've been aggressive early on in counts. Yeah, which is kind of interesting because you know it's one thing that that we've just kind of seen from Utah Valley, and they've it's led to a lot of early pitch count um, outs. They haven't really tried to work the count. Sometimes not even really work it in their favor. You know, waiting to swing until it's 1-0, 2-0, kind of a thing. They're swinging sometimes 0-1, you know, maybe maybe 1-0, and which I guess as a hitter, if you see a fastball and you see what you like, I guess it's just different approaches to hitting. The 0-1, a swing and a miss, and there was the off-speed stuff from Brubaker, and it's nothing in two to Polson. The right-handed hitter hitting 269 on the year. He has played first base this season for the Wolverines, a position he has not played before. The 0-2 pitch, fastball misses down and away at 91. One ball and two strikes. I think that just kind of shows you the level of character you have in Cade Polson being willing to make that move and for the coaching staff to say, hey, you know, we, we need you in the lineup. However, this the situation we're at with Paul Estrada. And Here's a swing and a ground ball to third. Lewis up with it, throws across, two down. Lewis at third base, he actually played summer ball with Drew Sims, the Wolverine catcher. In 
Southern California this summer. As you see, his right-hander, Brew Baker, who is settling into a rhythm here, is Plakus. Utah Valley's left fielder, Jake Places, hitting 207. The freshman with 29 at bats this season. He does have one home run. One to one our score. We're in the last of the second. Base is empty, two outs as Plakus takes a strike. The Wolverines in the alternate black tops this afternoon, white pants. UCI in the away grays, the one strike offering. There's a fastball at 90 miles an hour right on the outside corner. A great pitch. It's 0-2. Drew Baker out of San Clemente, California. It's not a bad place to grow up. The 0-2. Curve ball misses outside. 1-2. and two. We have not seen a lot of breaking balls early on from Drew Baker. He is still working through the order for the first time. The right fielder, Peabody, playing rather shallow. Everybody else straight away, medium deep. The one two, fastball misses high and away, and it's two and two. Two two from Brew Baker. A swing and a pop up back and out of play. Onto the rooftop. Be interesting to see how Brew Baker adjusts throughout the ball game. Sometimes we've seen some pitchers before, especially in whack play, Jordan, they seem like they get tougher the second, third time through the lineup, and oftentimes hitters figure out a pitcher when you get that, especially that third time through the order. 2-2 pitch, fastball misses off of the outside and the count is full. A good at bat here from Plakus. Trying to reach base with two outs. It will be interesting, the UC Irvine pitching staff has been so good this season. The 3-2, swing and a miss, struck him out and the inning is over. The Wolverines go down in order onto the third inning. It's the Anteaters 1, the Wolverines 1 on UVU TV. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. And name badges. Check out selections online at wilkinsonstrophy.com. Paxton Schultz back out on the mound. He will face Lewis, Domla, and Ritano. And here with the play-by-play -play is Ryan Pickens. Thank you, Jordan. The first pitch, a curveball in there for a called strike to Brandon Lewis. Lewis went down on strikes back in his first plate appearance for UC Irvine back in the first inning. This time he lifts this one into right. Alexander Marco a few steps towards center, makes the catch, and there's one gone here in the third inning. I think Paxton Schultz really needs a clean inning now here. He has allowed base runners in each of the first two innings. And he's had to labor, making high stress pitches. Adrian Domla, the first baseman standing in. Domla grounded out to Kate Polson at first. Back in his first plate appearance for UC Irvine. Paxton Schultz trying to work here. And there's the again the curveball in there for a called ball. One ball and no strikes. Just like Jordan mentioned, really looking for that clean one, two, three inning just to maybe kind of settle in a little bit here after UC Irvine loaded the bases in the second. There's another curveball that gets in there for a called strike at 76. Yeah, you start him off. Dom with the second time through with two curveballs. And let's see here, one one if he tries to go with the fastball. There is the fastball at 92 for a ball. And it's two and one the count here on Adrian Domla. 
UC Irvine, Utah Valley played three games last season out in Irvine, California. 2-1 pitch on its way. Outside ball three, three and one the count here on Domla. The Friday night game went to the Ant Eaters by a score of four to two. Then Utah Valley came back to win Saturday eight five and then Sunday winning nine to five as well. Here's a three one pitch and that's gonna be outside for ball four and Domla will draw the walk. That is the third walk of the afternoon given up by yeah, Paxton Schultz and Utah Valley pitching. And now the DH Matt Rattano will stand to the plate. Rattano can play all over the place for this UC Irvine team. He'll play catcher, he'll play some third base as well as looks like today DH for the Ant Eaters as he stands in. He had a sky high pop up to Cody Hall back in his last plate appearance. There's another first pitch curveball that misses high for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Other than that, UC Irvine really has dominated competition against Utah schools going 31 and 14. The 1-0 pitch on its way home. Rattano sends this one back to the screen and the count evens up at 1-1. One one. In the state of Utah, they're 13 and 5. And against the WAC, well, they're 42 and 15 against the WAC. Yikes. This is such a great program out of Southern California. Ben Orloff, the head coach in his first year, has led this team to a tremendous start, winning their first four series. And if they can win today, they will clinch that fifth series win. Last time a UCI team did that was 2009. Two balls and a strike on Rotano. The pitch on its way inside in tight ball three, and the count moves to three and one. You might think that with that kind of a history that UC Irvine's been playing baseball for for a while. They, they've they been Division One since about 2001 or so. UC Irvine has it. 3-1 pitch on its way, low and outside, ball four. So the fourth walk now given up by Paxton Schultz will put runners on at first and second with nobody or with one away. And here comes Jacob Castro who walked and came around to score. A lot of inflicted wounds here from Schultz early. And we've seen this from UC Irvine being very patient at the plate. They want to see a lot of pitches. They've done just that. Schultz at pitch number 54 already. They had baseball their first season back in 1970 and then I think it took a little bit of a, of a break and then came back in the 2002 season. Pitch on the outside corner for a called strike to Castro. Two College World Series appearances back in 2007 and 2014 and then a division uh, two division two national championships but one back in the 1970s. Castro ready to go at the no ball one strike count and the pitch on its way. Fastball off the plate and the count evens up a one ball one strike on Jacob Castro. Castro a slightly open stance stands in. One away here in the top of the third inning. Two ant eaters on the base paths. You see him there in your picture. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch on its way. Castro sends it foul down the left field line as once again, I believe we're gonna see Cole Yoakum in the Utah Valley bullpen starting to throw for the Wolverines. Ready to go here, Castro stands in. Paxton Schultz, a little more patient with runners on base and the one two pitch from Schultz on its way home. Slow curveball line foul off the netting past the Utah Valley dugout. We'll do it again. One ball and two strikes. Schultz right now. As you see right there, Cole Yoakum throwing. The left hander's been called upon multiple times this year for the Wolverines. Lot, oftentimes in tough spots, Castro turns on that one and lines it foul. Pass Cade Polson, and that one will go. Fallon will do it again. One ball and two strikes on Castro. Damla, who got on with a walk, running at second base. Ritano, who also walked, running over at first. Double play depth for, up the middle for the Wolverines. 
Here's the one-two pitch to Castro on its way. This one bounced over Polson makes the diving stop. His only play will be first. He'll underhand it to Paxton Schultz. And there's two away here in the third inning. Not an easy play, for especially for a guy who's not used to it, as we'll see it on instant replay. Now, Polson made a great job. You see him diving to his right here. And he saves a run with that play. Also knowing that Castro doesn't run well, took his time getting to his feet, made a good underhand toss. Here's Christian Koss now, the shortstop, is hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance. Gets a first pitch curveball in there for a called strike, and Schultz starting to locate that curveball really well. And that's a great pitch to steal a strike with. With the first pitch of the at-bat, Koss has not seen that really in today's game. Schultz, if you can throw that for a strike, that's a big weapon. The 0 1 pitch on its way, and Koss fouls this one off. Christian Koss, the junior infielder, played in 52 ball games last year for the Ant Eaters. Coming back and in the lineup this year for UC Irvine. No balls and two strikes to count. Schultz checks the runner. Time called, and he'll step off. Schultz has to be careful that 0-1 pitch. He hung a curveball and Koss just missed it. Ready to go. Schultz now comes set and comes home. And Koss gets under this one, lifts it to center. Beltran under it, waits for it, makes the catch, and the top of the third comes to an end. UC Irvine threatens, but no damage is done. We head to the bottom of the third, tied at one here on UVU TV. Eyes on me. I'm Mark Pope, coach of the UVU men's basketball team. I want to thank Carlos Iglesias and Ken Garf Volkswagen for being a great friend of Utah Valley University Athletics. Basketball, volleyball, and everything else. Thanks, coach. We're proud to support a great program like Utah Valley University Sports. We wish the Wolverines a fantastic season. You can thank Carlos, too, by visiting their new dealership today. Ken Garf Volkswagen. We, we hear, hear you. you. There is so much to celebrate in life, from the smallest of hands to the victories of youth and precious occasions with family and friends, sharing unforgettable moments. Continue accomplishing your goals and celebrate success at Utah Valley University. Apply by August 1st for fall semester. Bottom of the third inning here in Orem, tied at one between UC Irvine, the number 22 team in the country, and Utah Valley. The Wolverines will send up Payson Hayes, Trevor Howell, and Michael Beltran to face Tanner Brubaker. The right-hander so far has kind of just cruised through this Utah Valley lineup. The only mistake he made was on the home run to Alexander Marco. Here's the sophomore DH, Payson Hayes will stand in. And the first pitch from Brubaker is on its way home and Hayes gets under it, pops it up. The catcher, Castro, gives it a look, but it's gonna go well foul and out of play as it hits off the rooftop for strike one. No balls and a strike on Payson Hayes. Hayes has, was the starting first baseman for a majority of last season for the Wolverines. This year is been, has spent some time as the DH. Is two hits in his first 22 at-bats, but that can be kind of tough when you're not seeing everyday playing time. The 0-1 pitch, ground ball hit to third, scooped up there at third, and Lewis throws out Hayes, and there's one away here in the third. Sometimes so much of hitting is getting in a rhythm and a feel at the plate that can be hard if you're playing, you know, maybe once a week or so. And here's shortstop Trevor Howell. Yeah, Howell is another guy who's struggled with the bat early on this season, hitting just 171. He has led off for most of this year, but last night uh, Eric Matson, Utah Valley's head coach, put him in the nine spot, and that's where he is today. First pitch to Trevor Howell is swung on, and that one's bounced fair down the left field line. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. Howell will easily have two as Palmer up with it, and Trevor Howell standing on at second base with a one-out double. 
for the Wolverines. And just like Jordan mentioned, trying to get that back going as that one's just right down the line. Yeah, you see Howell pull that one, as you mentioned, Ryan, over the third base back, and that's huge for a couple of reasons. You get a guy at second, but also Beltran, your best hitter, is coming up, so now he can finally come to the plate with a man in scoring position. A chance to take the lead for Utah Valley. Beltran 0 for 1. That's one thing we saw in last night's ball game was Jake Palmer, the starting left fielder for UC Irvine, was playing so far into left center field that we talked about, you know, a ball hit down the line is going to be an easy double tonight. First pitch to Michael Beltran's low for ball one, one ball and no strikes on Beltran. Palmer not playing as deep this afternoon in left center field, but still kind of protecting that, that line and that gap out there. Ready to go with the 1-0 pitch. Brubaker checks the runner and comes home. And that one stays above the belt for ball two. It's two balls and no strikes on Beltran. Beltran hitting 348 with runners on this season. He's been terrific. Ready to go as Brubaker works. Trevor Howell, the runner for Utah Valley, getting his lead out at second base. The kind of position you want a hitter like Beltran in as he swings through it here. And it's two balls and a strike on the senior center fielder for Utah Valley. This is the first time we've seen Brubeck in his stretch today. And that can mess up your rhythm if you're pitcher on the mound, used to throwing out of the windup. Ready to go here with the 2-1 pitch. Brubaker comes home. That one's going to be grounded to the right side. Diving and coming up with it is Brooks. His throw to first in time to get Beltran. That will move Trevor Howell down to third base. A good play by Brendan Brooks. And there's two outs and Cody Hall coming to the plate. Yeah, that's a great look, you see, or a great play. You see Brooks here ranging to his left, and then he gets to his feet so quickly with the very fast Michael Beltran hustling up the line. And with two outs, it will be Cody Hall, who's 0 for 1. He flew out to right back in his first plate appearance for the Wolverines in the first pitch on its way to Cody Hall and that one in there at the knees for a called strike and it's 0-1 on Hall. Hall, a local kid who started his career at Salt Lake Community College and transferred here to Utah Valley, originally from American Fork. Here's the 0-1 pitch, curveball, misses for a ball and it evens the count up 1-1. American Fork just about 10 minutes up the road here from Warren. Very close, just right up I-15. Here's the 1-1 pitch about to come home to Cody Hall. That one low and it for ball two, two balls and a strike. Brubaker seems to be a, a little more patient on the mound with runners in scoring position right here. We've seen him kind of slow down a little bit from what we've seen when he's been working here from the windup. Ready to go here once again. The 2 1 pitch about ready to come home. That one high for ball three, right around letter high, and it's 3 and 1. Alexander Marco waits in the on deck circle for Utah Valley if Cody Hall should reach. Marco, they. I believe the RBI and the home run leader now for the Wolverines. Here's the 3-1 the pitch on its way to Cody Hall. He swings through it as he gets challenged with a fastball. And Brubaker brought that one at 88 miles, miles an hour. And that one just swung through by Hall. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes with two outs here in the bottom of the third. We're tied at one between UC Irvine and Utah Valley. Trevor Howell there at third base getting his lead. And the 3-2 pitch on its way. And Hall going to kind of make contact. Plays it out into left field. Up over the head of the shortstop. Koss into left field for an RBI single for Cody Hall. And Utah Valley has a 2-1 lead here in the bottom of the third. And those are the kinds of hits that just have not been falling for Utah Valley. A bloop in the left field as you see Hall just fight it off. And he does enough. And the Wolverines are able to take that lead. The question was whether... I did not think Palmer was going to get there. My only question was if Koss was going to be able to get there. And 
Koss made a good attempt, but couldn't get there. Here's Alexander Marco with two away, the pickoff move, and Hall dives back safely over at first underneath the tag. Right here in Utah Valley with a two to one lead. Ready to go here from the stretch, the right-hander, Brubaker. Comes home to Marco. That one blocked in the dirt for a ball. And it's 1-0 here on Alexander Marco. Marco moved up in the lineup today from hitting oftentimes down in that five spot. Five or the six spot for Utah Valley. Moved up into the three spot. Utah Valley hoping to maybe get some power from him. As Brubaker now steps our time was called, I think, by Alexander Marco. Gets back in the box. Brubaker ready to go, and the 1-0 pitch. Marco swings through it, and it evens the count up at one ball and one strike here for UC Irvine. Wolverines have just been pining for some power this season and Marco has supplied a little bit of that some back in the first inning with that home run but they could use some right here the 1-1 one -one pitch a slow curveball it stays up for ball two two balls and a strike that was something that when you take a look at it a lot of people would think just because of the elevation that Utah Valley plays at that you would have just an increased amount of home runs from these Wolverine hitters but Utah Valley Historically, just hasn't been a team the last three or four seasons anyway to hit a ton of home runs. Marco lets that one go by, and it stays high ball three, three balls and a strike. And here, Alexander Marco working the count into his favor now. Most likely here, going to probably see a 3-1 fastball. Yeah, Brubaker not real happy right now because those balls are easy takes for Marco. They're well out of the strike zone. Brubaker ready to go. Here's the 3-1 pitch on its way home. That one low and outside, ball four. And with two outs, the inning will continue, and you could bring up Drew Sims. It's a great at bat by Marco, not being over anxious, and we're going to have a trip to the mound from Daniel Bibona, the pitching coach from UC Irvine. New rules this season in college baseball. Mound visits are counted. Coaching visits are counted. You get three coaching visits without making a pitch on, pitching change in five overall mound visits from anyone, whether it's a shortstop or anybody defensively. Nobody up in that UC Irvine bullpen as you see Babona having a word with his right-hander. And right now the biggest thing here if you're UC Irvine is you know that you might be able to score some runs against Utah Valley, but a day like today with Paxton Schultz on the mound, if, Schultz can continue to pitch the way he has. It might be a, a little bit before those bats for UC Irvine can get going. We were talking uh, before the ball game with the uh, radio team from UC Irvine, just kind of talking about each other's clubs. And that was one thing that was pointed out by, that I think their radio play-by-play -play guy was, it may not be as easy for UC Irvine this afternoon against Schultz to score runs. Not that it was easy for them to score runs last night. Jake Carr pitched really well, but they took advantage of a few situations and some miscues from the Utah Valley pitching staff and just kind of one that just ended up getting away from the Wolverines. Two outs, here's Drew Sims, first pitch, fastball stays high for a ball and it's 1-0 on Drew Sims. Brubaker having a tough time locating and getting that first pitch strike. First time through the order, he did that. But the second time through, and here in the third inning especially, having a tough time getting that first pitch strike. Brubaker here, ready with the 1-0 pitch. Checks the runner at second and comes home. That one's right on the outside corner for ball two. It's two balls and no strikes on Drew Sims. Yeah, that's off that corner. It's Brubaker really being deliberate out there, taking a lot of time. He's just having a tough time finding that strike zone after being fairly, well, not fairly, really sharp the first time through the order. Ready to go here with the 2-0 pitch to Drew Sims. And there's a fastball that's going to catch the outer half for a strike at 88 miles an hour. It's 2-1 the count on Drew Sims. Mick Madsen on deck for the Wolverines. Sims had a successful summer playing 
Summer ball out in California. And the 2-1 pitch on its way home. Fastball right on the outside corner for a strike. And it evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. And with Drew Sims last year, it was kind of just trying to find a rhythm as at the plate as a freshman and maybe a lot of it making adjustments to facing college pitching and the transition from his freshman year to the sophomore year for Drew Sims has been just completely a game changer. Here's the 2-2 called, strike three on the out outside corner and the inning comes to an end. We head to the fourth though, Utah Valley plates one. It's a 2-1 lead for UVU on UVU TV. Did you know that over 43 million Americans struggle with mental health problems annually? 43 million. That's one in five adults. Did you know that there's one death by suicide in the United States every 12 minutes? Did you know that suicide takes the lives of over 40,000 Americans each year? Over 40,000 mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, and friends. Did you know that you can help reverse this trend? If you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness, don't keep it to yourself. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool too. Yep. When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now, with the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. Well, the WAG preseason coaches poll, when that came out, we kind of thought it would, might look somewhere similar to the way it did. Grand Canyon picking up majority of the votes. Coaches could not give themselves first place votes, but Grand Canyon finishing atop, followed by New Mexico State, Sacramento State, Seattle, California Baptist, UTRGV, and on down. And California Baptist not eligible for the WAC tournament down in Mesa this year, but the early uh, the early look at the standings, Jordan would have have one have two up at the one spot with New Mexico State. Grand Canyon's kind of in the middle of the uh, pack so far. Yeah, with uh, WAC play finally beginning next weekend, the Wolverines will head up to Seattle to get things going. And yeah, not much expected of the Wolverines this season. They're looking to surprise some people. Brendan Brooks stands in and takes a called strike, and it's 0-1 here on Brendan Brooks. Brooks flew out to center back in his first plate appearance, and the, quickly with the 0-1 pitch outside for a ball, and evens the count up at 1-1. And, one. and I mean, those preseason polls are just kind of a, a measuring stick, really, of what t other people seem to think as Brooks pops it up and sent foul. I think it was Utah State men's basketball were projected to finish last in the Mountain West, and they asked their head coach Craig Smith about it and that's kind of the way he described it and said well because that's just what everybody else thought that we would be and there ended up I believe playing for the Mountain West Conference Championship game tonight that one sent foul quickly I think into the dugout area and sent a couple of anteaters quickly looking for space in the dugout there's a lot of looks going into that dugout I don't know if somebody ended up getting hit but the one two pitch to cost misses low for a ball and it's two balls and two strikes right now that netting that they have around does not cover the dugout there's a ground ball Matson right there fields it cleanly throws across the diamond in time and there's one gone Mick Madsen right there taking a nice little tough in between hop right there not an easy play but makes a great throw yeah that's you'll see it here this is a really easy ball to get handcuffed on if you're Madsen and he does a great job down to one knee and then takes his time with the strong throw across. That's somebody they're excited about. Freshman. Time called here from Mike Peabody as he stepped out of the box. Paxton Schultz was starting to get into his windup, and I think some people wanted, did not want that time there to be granted. Uh, pitchers aren't too happy when they're in their windup, and a late time call is granted. Pitch on its way, Peabody takes a called strike one with the fastball on its own one. Mick Madsen, a high school infielder, high, uh, shortstop and pitcher for the most part, just up the road at American Fork, but sometimes making that change from 
other positions can be a little bit of a challenge. The 0-1 pitch outside for a ball, even as the count of 1-1. One one. It can, and he's done a nice job when he's gotten some playing time in the infield this season. The 1-1 one -one pitch on its way, and Peabody lifts this one and sends it foul, and it's one ball and two strikes. Schmidt, through four innings, has retired each leadoff man he's faced, but then in each, four, each of the first four innings, he's allowed the next man to reach base. So this is a big at bat for Schmidt. Try to keep it going. The one-two pitch, swung on and missed. Strike three, and Peabody goes down on strikes there for Paxton Schultz. That gives him his first strike, his second strikeout of the ball game. Take a look at that slider down in the zone. That's a great spot to put it. And that, you're able to do that when you get ahead in the count because you can waste one. You don't have to worry about coming in. Jake Palmer delivers a first pitch. Or, sorry, Paxton Schultz delivers a first pitch to Jake Palmer. And it's 0 and 1 on the leadoff man for UC Irvine. Ready to go here with the 0 1 pitch. That one blocked in the dirt and it evens the count up at one ball and one strike. Palmer came in. He had reached base in all 13 previous games for UC Irvine. And he reached base again last night as well for UC Irvine and has already reached base here drawing a walk. There's a one hopper hit right to Trevor Howell and just kind of ate him up there. Got caught in the in-between hop. Palmer takes a long turn at first and he will hold there with what's going to end up being, I believe, a, long, uh, a base hit for him with how hard that ball was hit. Yeah, smoked right at Howell. He did a nice seven job of getting some glove on it. Irvine, number seven, Mikey Falia. And they're going to call that, it looks like they're going to change it. They're going to call that an E6. It's what they put up on the scoreboard here. And so Trevor Howell there will get credited with the error. And Mikey Falia will stand in. Falia sends this one back to the screen. No balls and a strike here on Falia. That's a tough error on Trevor Howell. That ball really ate him up. No balls and a strike to count on Falia. Falia one for two, a single and a pop out to short. Back to end the second. The 0 1 pitch, the curveball gets in there for a strike, and it's 0 and 2 on Falia. We've seen Blake Jensen, the home plate umpire, give that outside corner. That would look to be a bit outside, gave him the strike. He called Drew Sims out on strikes in the last of the third on that same pitch. No balls and two strikes. The pitch on its way called strike three. This one on the inside corner, and the inning comes to an end. UC Irvine gets a base runner. Paxton Schultz now up to his third strikeout. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Utah Valley leading number 22, UC Irvine, two to one. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Hyundai. I promise you'll love it. Get more vehicle for your dollar from Utah's largest Hyundai dealer. Drive home a new 2019 Hyundai Tucson for only $199 a month, or you'll love the new Elantra for only $13,990. Go ahead and compare at MurdochHyundai.com. You gotta come and see it in Logan, Linden, and Murray. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool, too. Yep. When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now. With the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. Tanner Brubaker back to work for UC Irvine. Right now, the Wolverines have found a way to get some base runners this afternoon. And third baseman Mick Madsen will take a look. Brubaker's line still looks really well on the day. Utah Valley just found just taking advantage of a couple of base hits. A home run and a clutch RBI single as Mick Madsen takes the first pitch fastball away for ball one. Yeah, the Wolverines trying to hang on to a two to one lead. One ball and no strikes to count here on Mick Madsen. They've changed the what was the Jake Palmer 
when he reached in the top half of the inning, they've changed it from a hit or from an error to a hit. So Palmer now will be one for two in the ball game. And that was a tough play for Trevor Howell, nonetheless. One ball, one strike to count here on Mick Madsen. Brubaker kicks and delivers this one here, and Madsen grounds this one to short. Koss up with it, throws across the diamond in time. There's one away. Here's the first baseman, Cade Polson. Polson 0 for 1, grounded out to third back in his first plate appearance of the ball game for Utah Valley. He's been a consistent starter throughout his three years here at Utah Valley. Ready to go, Brubaker on the mound, working from the windup. Comes home with the first pitch to Polson, who swings and grounds this one to second. Backhanded play by Brooks, who throws out Polson, and there's two away here in the fourth. Well, Ryan, on Tuesday night, BYU comes into UCCU ballpark. The, the uh, Cougars, rather. They are playing just a few miles to the east of us at Miller Park. They were trailing Gonzaga three to two on the out of town scoreboard. That game in the, I believe it was in the sixth inning. And that's a big early, big early uh, season as you see Utah Valley finishes up their homestand before heading to Seattle U next weekend. Pitch in there for a called strike to Jake Plakis in zone one. Nothing like starting out your conference season with a tough opponent like Gonzaga. And th that series, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was moved down to Provo after they had some weather issues up in Spokane. The 0-1 pitch misses for a ball, and it's 1-1 one one here on Plakis. Brubaker calls time as... Or Plakis calls time, sorry. It's just Brubaker was taking some time there. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch on its way home. That one's a fastball, misses outside for a ball, and it's 2-1 the count on Jake Plakis. Plakis struck out back in his first plate appearance. Infield back for UC Irvine. Here's the 2-1 pitch on its way home. That one low for a ball, and it's 3-1 on Jake Plakis. Blake has had a good at bat back in the second inning. Count went full. And here he's seeing a lot of pitches. Should get something to, good to hit, 3-1. Three balls and a strike to count. Brubaker kicks and delivers this one to Plakis. Low and outside ball four. Jake Plakis draws a nice walk here in the fourth, and that will continue the inning for Payson Hayes. Payson Hayes, as you mentioned earlier, man, trying to get that bat going. He's struggled with just two hits this season. Hit the ball hard in the first inning, but right at Lewis at third. And those are the times when it can be easy to get discouraged as a hitter when you're hitting the ball hard and you're putting it in play and you're just hitting it right at people. Brubaker ready to come home here for the first pitch to Payson Hayes, and there's a fastball right on the outside corner for a ball. As ball one to Pace and Hayes. Hayes grounded to third. I'm trying to remember, we didn't see Hayes last night. I think it was the game, maybe the game on Sunday that Pace and Hayes stepped in and got in that bat. Here's the 1 0 pitch on its way to Pace and Hayes. Hayes takes that one on the outer half for a called strike. Evens the count up a 1 and 1. Plakis gets his lead over at first. Hayes stands in, ready to go. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch from Brubaker. Fastball stays high, and it's 2-1 and one on Payson Hayes. So Hayes getting it into a good hitter's count right now, trying to find something right here. I'd like to see if you could maybe get something up in the strike zone, maybe to see Payson Hayes if he can elevate it. He's got good pop in the bat if he can get something elevated. The 2-1 pitch on its way right there on the outside corner, and that's been a strike here this afternoon, and that's strike there, and it's 2-2 two and two on Hayes. Yeah, the ball looks to be a, maybe an inch or two off the plate, but Blake Jensen has been consistent with that call. Two balls and two strikes here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. 
Plakis gets his lead over at first. And the pitch on its way, and that one's low ball three. UC Irvine thought they had strike three. Their infield was heading towards the first base dugout. Instead, the count goes full. And now Jake Plakis can be off on the move here with the pitch. The first baseman playing behind Plakis. Here's the 3-2 on its way, and Hayes hits this one down the right field line, running back on it, and it is going to be a foul ball. We'll do it again. That one had the distance to get out, but Hayes just didn't keep it fair. Yeah, he was a little late on the fastball, but that's the kind of swing that Payson Hayes can put on a ball. If you, As you mentioned, Ryan, that slight uppercut, he can drive it. We just haven't seen it this season. Hayes last year hit four or five home runs for Utah Valley. Had a tough time with the strikeouts though. But when you're a young when you're a young college hitter, that's sometimes can be the issue. And Hayes this time lines this one out in the right center field gap. That's gonna sit. Hayes around first. It's gonna be a long base hit. Taking off with the pitch was Plake as he ends up over at third base, and that's the kind of hitting you want to see from Pace and Hayes there. And now you bring up Trevor Howell with two outs and runners on the corners. It's a great job by Hayes as you see him go get a tough pitch. That's low and away, and Hayes puts the barrel of the bat on it. You see Plakas off with the pitch, allowing him to take third. That's a great job by Hayes, a piece of, or a, or a good piece, I should say, of two out hitting. But it'd be nice if you could see, if you could see Pace and Hayes maybe go two for three or just have a two-hit ball game or something to get going right here. A nice, it gives Eric Madsen a nice option to put in the lineup. Here's Trevor Howell, who is one for one with a double and a run scored. Fastball misses away for a ball, and it moves the count to one and oh. And you see there the fastball missing outside. I think Brubaker remembered Howell ambushed that first pitch back in the third inning and doubled down the line and Brubaker did not want to pour one in there. One ball and no strikes the count on Trevor Howell. Runners on the corners with two away here in the bottom of the fourth. 2-1 lead for Utah Valley. Brubaker working from the stretch. Showing some patience here with the runners on the corners. Pace and Hayes not a threat to steal at first. Here's the 1-0 pitch on its way, and that one's going to miss low for a ball, and it's 2-0 on Trevor Howell. One of the reasons why I say Payson Hayes not a big base stealing threat is he's got a very conservative lead over at first base. Yeah, not, not a fast runner. Here's the 2-0 pitch about ready to come home to Trevor Howell. Brubaker kicks and delivers this one. Howell route rolls it foul over in front of the Utah Valley dugout. Well, the Wolverines this afternoon have come through with two out base hits, and that is not something they've done a lot of this season. Two balls and a strike on Trevor Howell. Brubaker ready to go here from the stretch. Checks the runner at third and comes home with the 2-1. In high and tight ball three. And it's three and one on Trevor Howell. And if you're Brubaker, you want to challenge Howell because Michael Beltran, the Wolverines' best hitter, is on deck. And he has struggled in this series, but you can't imagine that will last long. Cody Hall and Alexander Marco follow Beltran, and so then you start dealing with the tough part of that Utah Valley lineup, the two hitters that have been the difference in the ball game. The 3-1 pitch, that one misses for ball four. And I think Trevor Howell thought that was going to be a strike. He wasn't taken off right away. But Blake Jensen does not give Brubaker the call. I have a conference on the mound here. The UC Irvine infield is going to come in with two outs. And now you got to deal with Michael Beltran. And this is the opportunity for Utah Valley offensively to try to see if the Wolverines can put some kind of a crooked number up. Utah Valley has not been a team to have really a big inning this year. Beltran, you, know, you mentioned that Beltran 0 for 6 in this series, although he did hit one to the right side that Brooks really robbed him of a base hit back in the third. Not a terribly hard hit ball. But this is the guy, even 0 for 6 standing, 
you want up there if you're the Wolverines. Beltran will stand in from the right side. Open stance right here. From the stretch, ready to go, Brubaker. Comes home, first pitch, a fastball right there on that outside corner for a strike, and it's 0-1. Beltran with six multi-hit games this year for the Wolverines. Standing in, ready to go. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Beltran. Slow curveball in the outside corner, and it's quickly 0-2. The Wolverines have had a tough time this year getting that clutch hit that they've needed to really get things going. No balls and two strikes to count on Beltran. Ready to go. Here's the 0-2. There's a ground ball hit to third. Up with it. They'll go to second for the out, and the inning's over. Utah Valley strands three on the base paths. But we've reached the end of four. Utah Valley leading UC Irvine two to one on UVU TV. accept the challenge to become. It doesn't matter your situation in life. No matter your interest. Whether your first choice or second chance. There's a place for you. Place for you. Place for you at UVU. Place to engage, to rise, to succeed. To become. Two to one, Utah Valley leading UC Irvine as we head to the fifth inning. It will be Lewis, Domla, and Ritano. Three, four, and five against Paxton Schultz. You see there, four innings, three hits, one run. He has pitched very, very well. He's been in and out of trouble though. Not an easy afternoon as he winds and fires to begin the fifth. And a fastball at 91, misses down and away. The Wolverine has allowed base runners in all four innings. A curveball there and swinging and missing is Lewis. One ball and one strike the count. The anteater third baseman 0 for 2 this afternoon. Schmidt working quickly. A fastball is chopped foul down the third baseline. And the count is one ball, two strikes. This is the first really competitive game the Wolverines have had in a week or so. They've had the one win against Niagara, but that, I take that back. That was a competitive game as Lewis fouls it off, but in the late innings, the Wolverines pulled ahead and ended up winning 8-3. The Wolverines have really been manhandled in the rest of these ball games, including last night. You see Irvine went 15 to nothing as Lewis swings and misses. The fourth strikeout of the afternoon for Schultz, and there's one down. She take a look at that pitch, a slider down and away. Pretty pitch to finish off Lewis, and here is Domla. Wolverines have come out today and really played well. Although they did leave the bases loaded in the last half of the fourth, they lead two to one. The pitch, this is down low to the left-handed hitting Domla. He is 0 for 1. He walked back in the third inning. Domla hitting 296 on the season. Fastball misses down low, and it's 2 and 0. A beautiful, sunshiny day in Utah Valley. No clouds in the sky. The 2 0 from Schmidt is a fastball right there on the outside corner, called for strike one. 
as you see the Wasatch Mountains beyond left field on our telecast. Just a perfect day for baseball. A little chilly. Temperature in the 40s as that fastball just misses off the outside corner. We've seen that pitch called for a strike this afternoon from Blake Jensen. Schmidt does not get the call there. It is 3-1 to Domla. Domla does not have a homer this season. He takes a fastball way outside. Another walk from Schultz. That is the fifth walk Schultz has issued today. He's also hit a bat. Paxton just can't get a clean 1-2-3 inning. So here is Rotano, the designated hitter. Popped up back in the second. He walked in the third inning. No batting gloves for Domla. The pitch to him. A swing and a fly ball. High into deep left center field. Beltram back. Well short of the track. He makes the grab out there in Death Valley. 427 feet to that alleyway. So... Cretano hits it hard, but Beltran able to track it down, and they're two down. A great job by Schmidt getting Cretano on one pitch. That helps him out. He has thrown 89 pitches. We've seen the left-hander Cole Yoakum get up for the Wolverines in the bullpen. He is sitting down down there right now. The left-handed hitting Castro takes a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Schultz has located that fastball this afternoon very well. That one knee high on the black. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Fastball is hit softly to short. Howell has it. He underhands to second. Hall steps on the bag, and that is a good inning, a solid inning for Paxton Schultz. A man left, no runs. We head to the last of the fifth, 2-1 to one, Wolverines. Eyes on me. I'm Mark Pope, coach of the UVU men's basketball team. I want to thank Carlos Iglesias and Ken Garf Volkswagen for being a great friend of Utah Valley University Athletics. Basketball, volleyball, and everything else. Thanks, coach. We're proud to support a great program like Utah Valley University Sports. We wish the Wolverines a fantastic season. You can thank Carlos, too, by visiting their new dealership today. Ken Garf Volkswagen. We, we hear, hear you. you. Here at Intermountain Healthcare, our doctors have experience treating young athletes, professional athletes, and the athlete next door. We treat everyday injuries, sports injuries, concussions, total joint replacements, and everything in between. Come visit our board certified physicians and surgeons here at Intermountain Healthcare's Utah Valley Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. We're committed to keeping you moving. Back here at UCCU Ballpark, Utah Valley leading UC Irvine 2-1 as we take a look at some recent results. The Wolverines have had a tough go of it the last week. You see they have just been out hit in a lot of those games, but the Wolverines lead here. Last night was the toughest loss, 15 to nothing. The Wolverines one hit by UC Irvine. And what's tough in that group, Jordan, is you look at 15, 11, 10, 12. I mean, in that group there... <laughs> You start getting giving up those kind of runs, you need to have a monster offense that can put up runs. And Utah Valley just hasn't just hasn't been playing their best baseball that we've seen them play. So it would be good to see if they can just kind of get it back on track a little bit here next couple of games before Seattle. Here is Cody Hall taking the ball down low. Hall singled in a run back in the third inning, a two-out bloop over the head of the shortstop. That gave the Wolverines the lead. They do lead right now, two to one. From the windup, Brubaker throws. And there's a swing and a fly ball into center field. Thalia going back, he leaps and he makes the grab just as he touches down on the warning track, one away. Hall gave it a ride, but a great job by Thalia, moving back into his left. And it's hard when you're running away from the baseball like that, especially when you start getting those kind of over-the-shoulders catches. You have to make a, a good read. If you're not able to make a good read on it, Jordan, it's easy to miss the baseball. Thalia had to go a little ways. He was shading all toward left center as 
Marco takes a strike. Marco put the Wolverines ahead back in the first inning with a solo shot over the left field wall. His third of the season. The one strike pitch comes up and in. Look out, a breaking ball missing from Brubaker. One and one the count. Marco walked back in the third inning. He is one for one officially. As you see Brubaker exhale. He has worked in and out of jams today. From the windup, a swing and a liner at second base through Brooks and into right center field. A hard hit ball. Marco's going to round first, but stop there as the center fielder, Felia, came up with it and fired into second base. There's a second base hit of the afternoon for Marco. And the thing you like about that, Jordan, is that's just a hard hit baseball. There's not much there that Brooks is going to be able to do to make that play. And this is the kind of swings you want Utah Valley putting on the putting on the ball here in the next week or so. Irvine's going to get a right-hander start to throw down their bullpen. So that's a really good sign to try to get to that bullpen before you get into the later innings. Here is Drew Sims with a man on and a man out. The pitch to him. Fastball misses high. Ball one. Sims over two. Struck out looking in the third. Drew Baker back into his stretch. Wolverines with a two to one lead. Marco Alexander with a short lead at first, held on by Domlo. The 1 0. Sims swings and grounds one to short. This could be two. Cost a second for one, and Brooks bobbles it, but they get the out at second. The third base umpire, that is Kevin Dougherty, said it was on the exchange, the drop. And so you see here. Pass underhand or sidearm to Brooks in second. Brooks just wasn't able to get the ball out of the glove to make the double play. So two down. Here is Mick Matson, the freshman. First pitch fastball is hammered foul down the right field line. Mick wearing number seven. Mickey Mantle's number, it's his namesake. The great slugger for the Yankees in the 50s and 60s. Sims not a fast runner, he's at first held on by Domla. The one strike offering to Matson misses outside and it's one and one. Matson 0 for two, he has bounced out twice today. He is 6 for 30 on the season. Pitch to him. Swing and a miss at a fastball at 90 miles an hour. And the count is one ball, two strikes. Got a lot of the DH at bats earlier in the season in that Fresno State and the South Carolina series. Had a couple of hits at one of those games, I know for sure, in Columbia. The kid out of American Fork. The 1 2 from Brew Baker. A swing and a foul tip into the glove of Castro and the inning is over. The Wolverines get a hit. They leave a man stranded. No runs. On to the sixth. Utah Valley with a 2-1 to -one lead over UC Irvine. Did you know that over 43 million Americans struggle with mental health problems annually? 43 million. That's one in five adults. Did you know that there's one death by suicide in the United States every 12 minutes? Did you know that suicide takes the lives of over 40,000 Americans each year? Over 40,000 mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, and friends. Did you know that you can help reverse this trend? If you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness, don't keep it to yourself. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Chevrolet. I promise you'll love it. Before you even think about buying a new truck or SUV, you've got to check out MurdochChev.com. You'll be glad you did. We've got huge discounts on all 2018 models, and you're going to love the 2019 Silverado. Only at Murdoch Chevrolet in Logan and Woodcroft. You've, you've got to come and see. Final game of 
Paxton Schultz, the right-hander, rubbing up the baseball as we get set for inning number six. Two to one, Utah Valley leading it. Now the Wolverines have had some opportunities with runners on, have not been able to come through, but they have the two to one lead. It's really been UC Irvine squandering opportunities this afternoon. They have left eight men on base. Schultz has not made it easy on himself, has allowed a base runner in each of the first five innings and has thrown 91 pitches. He will face Koss, Brooks, and Peabody, the bottom third of the UC Irvine order. Koss this afternoon was hit by a pitch. He is also grounded out. This one swung on and lifted high into center field. Beltran under it. He makes the grab, and on one pitch, Koss is retired. So Schmidt will take now that. For Number 37, hey, Baxter Schultz Brooks. has had some great outings this year. One of those um, outings against South Carolina struck out 11 batters in that ball game. And to go on the road to play a team from the SEC and strike out 11 hitters, that lets you know your stuff was pretty, pretty dominant that day. First pitch, breaking ball, misses down and away to Brooks. He's over two. Fastball at 91 miles an hour on the outside corner. Strike one. We have seen Schultz hit 94 on the gun today. Curveball is lined in the left field, a base hit. So Brooks is on the another base runner for UC Irvine. And that will bring up Peabody. That's a good piece of hitting there. Takes a pitch on the inside part of the plate, doesn't try to do too much with it, and just finds a way to get that base hit to left. That's a nice job there by Brooks to, of hitting right there. So here's Peabody. He singled in UC Irvine's lone run back in the second. A left-handed hitter. Here it comes. Fastball, and this is outside, ball one. Peabody is hitting 346 in 26 at-bats this season. No home runs. His base hit to tie the game in the second came with two outs. A line drive into right center field. Here's a line drive into left field. The second consecutive single for UC Irvine. Peabody's in there as Brooks moves to second. And UC Irvine is threatening in the sixth. Now for UC Irvine, number 28. Jake Peabody Palmer. goes the other way, and that turns the lineup over. Here is Palmer. You see Peabody just line that through the 5.5 hole as Cole Yoakum, the left-hander in the bullpen, gets up for Utah Valley. Palmer singled back in the fourth inning. A hard hit ball off the glove of Howell at shortstop. Schultz throws, first pitch curve ball in there for a called strike. It may have been the slider. And second thought. Palmer hitting 271 from the left side. No home runs this season. Schultz peers in, slowing things down. Now time is taken by Palmer at home plate. The Wolverines leading two to one. Two men on, one man out in the sixth inning. The one strike offering. Fastball misses outside. And it's one and one. This is a good opportunity for Paxton Schultz to try to just settle in. But you'd really like a ground ball here. However, Palmer runs really well, so it's going to have to be hit right at somebody if you're going to try to turn two. Here comes pitch number 100 on the afternoon. Curve ball misses outside, and it's two and one. You have the left-hander, Yoakum, throwing again, Jordan. You don't have another lefty until you get down to, to Domla. So I'd really like to see here if uh, Schultz could get through uh, uh, Felia and Lewis. Here it comes to Palmer. The 2-1 is lying foul over the third base dugout. And the count's even at 2-2. Two two. Peabody at first, he singled. Brooks singled. He's at second. 
base hit would most likely tie the game. The outfield medium deep and straight away for Utah Valley. So you see Beltran in center. Fastball misses up high and the count runs full. So now we'll see if UC Irvine starts the runners here for the full count, one away in the inning. A straight up stance for Palmer. The 3-2 pitch from Schultz. Fastball, got him looking on the outside corner. Strikeout number five for Paxton Schultz. Palmer thought he had ball four. But that's a good looking pitch. That's really right down the middle. You could argue that Schultz caught too much of the plate there. That's, I'm not sure where Palmer was headed. So two down. A huge out for Schultz, but he's not done yet. Here is Falia. Righty versus righty. Falia single back in the first inning. He is one for three. Schultz checks on the runner, now comes home. A swing and a pop-up. Center field, Beltran back. He's under it. And the inning is over. What a job by Paxton Schultz. Two hits, two left, no runs for the Anteaters. On to the last of the sixth. It's two to one, Utah Valley. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from DNA analysis to animal behavior, there is a place for you at UVU. A place to rise, to engage, to succeed, to become. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool too. Yep. When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now, with the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. You see Tanner Brubaker on the mound for UC Irvine. He's out there for his sixth inning of work. Utah Valley with a two to one lead. Brubaker will face Poulsen, Plakus, and Hayes, six, seven, and eight in the Utah Valley order. Now Schultz in the top half of this inning got out of a jam, first and second, one out, and he escapes unscathed. Olsen is 0 for 2 this afternoon. From the windup, Brubaker kicks and comes home, and there's a swing and a foul back to the screen on a fastball at 90 miles an hour. The Wolverines looking to lengthen their lead. No home runs for Polson on the year, seven RBIs. Pitch to him, a swing and a foul back again, it's 0-2. We'll see if Eric Matson sends Schultz back out there to begin the seventh inning. It looks like he will. No one is up in the bullpen for the Wolverines. Schultz has thrown over 100 pitches. 0-2 to Polson. Brubaker comes home. Fastball misses up high. It's 1-2. Brubaker with that big wind-up hand and glove over the head. The big leg kick. Righty versus righty. The one-two pitch. Fastball misses up high again. And it's two and two. Brubaker has really relied on that fastball this afternoon. His two best pitches, the fastball and the slider, but he will feature the curveball and changeup as well. 2-2 two -two to Polson. Fastball at 91, misses outside and the count runs full. There is a right-hander up for UC Irvine as Brubaker takes a walk. That is Baco. 
in the bullpen for the Anteaters. Payoff pitch to Polson. A swing and a chopper towards short. Charging his cost, he has it, throws. Polson out by a half a step. And there's one away in the Wolverine sixth inning. Next up for you, you left fielder, number one, Jake Blakis. So here's Plakis with the bases empty and one gone. As you see Baco getting ready, he looks to be about set. Should Ben Orloff go to him? He's their big closer. They have a couple of guys, him and Taylor Rashi, they can both kind of use in that closer role. So that tells you what UC Irvine's thinking right now, um, even trailing right now, two to one. Fastball misses outside to Plakis, ball one. Wolverine left fielder walked in his last at bat. He's also struck out. And Brubaker, he has allowed base runners in every inning, but really pretty economical with his pitches as that one is fouled off the facing of the overhang. And it's one and one. At 91 pitches, Brubaker peers in. Base is empty, one out, two to one. Wolverines, the one one pitch. Fastball misses up high, and it's two and one. Payson Hayes is on deck. Utah Valley scored one run in the first inning and one run in the third. Two runs on five hits, no errors. Brubaker with the two one offering. Fastball misses down and away, and it's three and one. So here, Plakis, who does have one homer on the season, could guess fastball and let one fly. The mustachio third baseman waiting. Here comes the fastball up and in, ball four. And right now, it just doesn't seem like Brubaker's real comfortable throwing the breaking stuff. Which is interesting because that was a big thing of what we thought he'd feel most comfortable with. And we're going to have a visit out to the mound here and the night for the afternoon for Brubaker is going to come to an end. But, you know, it's still, I mean, not a bad outing if you're if you're Brubaker. But if you're Utah Valley right now, you're just trying to figure out right here exactly what you have to do. And if you're UC Irvine, you don't want to get down at all. And so you don't want to get too, down too much more, especially with a guy like Schultz on the mound. So the new right-hander will come in for UC Irvine. The Wolverines threatening with a man on in the sixth inning. Brubaker heads for the dugout. We'll be back, UBU leading two to one. I hate math. I can't count how many times I've heard people say that. And as a math teacher, I take it personally. So, while working on my master's at UVU, I developed ways to help kids not hate math. Does engaged learning make a difference? You do the math. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Hyundai. I promise you'll love it. Get more vehicle for your dollar from Utah's largest Hyundai dealer. Drive home a new 2019 Hyundai Tucson for only $199 a month, or you'll love the new Elantra for only $13,990. Go ahead and compare at MurdochHyundai.com. you got to come and see us in Logan, Linden, and Murray. Tanner Brubaker right there goes five and a third innings, allows five hits, two runs, both earned, four walks and three strikeouts, a, a pretty good line so far through the afternoon. Just to give you an idea, he is responsible for Jake Plakis over a first. The new right-hander will be number 21, Jordan Botko. Botko 3-0 and on the year, making his seventh appearance. He's gone 10 and a third innings for the UC Irvine, five hits, one run not earned, one walk and 16 strikeouts. Opponents are hitting just 136 off Botko. And so Jordan, if you're Utah Valley, I think this kind of shows you exactly the way UC Irvine's looking at this ball game, even though they're trailing right now. 
the Anteaters are saying, okay, we're going to go to the back end of our bullpen here, get him some work, and try to keep those bats quiet. Absolutely, and that bullpen's had rest, and they have pitched well this season. So Baco working from the stretch with a man on. Here is Hayes. First pitch, fastball, swung on, foul back and out of play. That one at 89 miles an hour. Hayes came up in the fourth inning, came through with a single through the right side, was ultimately stranded on the base pads. The DH trying to get the bat going this season. He is, he's had just three hits in 23 at bats. 24, I beg your pardon. Curveball stays up high, and it's one and one. Plakis is at first base. He walked. One out in the inning, two to one, Utah Valley. Baco out of Southern California comes set. The 1 1 pitch, and Hayes shows bunt, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. That's an interesting square around there if you're Hayes with one strike already on you and a guy at first with one out. So you'd have to be bunting to sacrifice him over. Hayes is not a fast runner. The one-two pitch coming from Baco, a swing and a foul tip into the glove of Castro. The first strikeout for Baco and there are two away and that that's where that bunt, you wonder why you square around right there as you see Hayes swing and miss because you really give away a strike. Well, and two, it's just kind of a, usually you would see him just step in the box initially and just lay down the bunt here. And with one out, a sacrifice bunt moving the runner over to second, really, I don't know if it really is that beneficial to you when you have a guy like Hayes who put a great swing on his previous at bat. Howell takes a big cut and comes up empty. 0-1 here to Trevor. Trevor Howell doubled and scored back in the third inning. That put the Wolverines ahead 2-1. to one. That's where we are right now. Last of the sixth. The outfield shallow for Howell. The 0-1 one, the oh one rather. And a fastball misses high and away. One and one the count. The last time Baco pitched was on March 9th against St. John's. Went one inning, struck out one, no runs, no hits. In fact, he has not given up a single run all year. Or what, what, no earned runs, I should say. Hasn't allowed a hit since the month of February when he pitched against uh, Loyola Marymount. One one curveball, a good looking curveball on the inside corner called for a strike. It's one and two. Does you see Irvine pitching staff? I don't know right now if you're going to find a better pitching staff that is built for a deep postseason run than right now UC Irvine. With three frontline starters pitching well like this, you get the back end of the bull, of the bullpen pitching this well. Boy, I mean, they're going to be a dangerous team. Fastball right there on the outside corner called for strike three. So Baco strikes out the two men he faces, and we head to the seventh inning. Two to one, Utah Valley leading on UVU TV. Did you know that over 43 million Americans struggle with mental health problems annually? 43 million. That's one in five adults. Did you know that there's one death by suicide in the United States every 12 minutes? Did you know that suicide takes the lives of over 40,000 Americans each year? Over 40,000 mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, and friends. Did you know that you can help reverse this trend? If you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness, don't keep it to yourself. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool, too. Yep. When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now. With the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. 
Utah Valley leading 2-1 to one as we head to the seventh inning. Don't forget to stick around for our post-game show. After the game, we will hand out our Wilkinson's Trophy Player of the Game. With 41 years of experience, Wilkinson's Trophy is your place for awards, screen printing, embroidery, and name badges. Check out selections online at wilkinsonstrophy.com. Paxton Schultz back out on the mound. He's thrown 104 pitches. He faces Lewis here in the seventh, and here with the play-by-play is Ryan Pickens. Thank you, Jordan. Brandon Lewis takes his first pitch, low ball one, one ball and no strikes. As right now, UC Irvine trying to see if they can get one run back. Lewis lines this one into deep left center field. That's going to one hop the wall. Around first goes Lewis, and he's heading into second with a stand up leadoff double. Lewis, we talked about earlier in the ball game, his ability to hit for some power. Well,. 30 home runs last year, 17 in junior college, eight in the summer, and five at early on this season. Boy, 30 home runs in a calendar year, that's a lot of home runs. And Yoakum, the left-hander, seems to be about ready in the bullpen as the left-handed hitting Domlo will come to the plate, but Eric Matson sticking with Schultz so far. Domla 0 for 1, a ground out to first to go along with a pair of walks. And there he gets a first pitch curveball, misses away for ball one. One ball and no strikes. The count here on Domla. Yoakum up and now a right hander. I think that's probably Jesse Schmidt beginning to throw down there in the bullpen for the Wolverines. Ready to go from the stretch. Schultz checks the runner at second and comes home. Fastball misses outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Schultz right now up over 108 pitches. As you see Domla stand in the box here. Tying run for the Anteaters on in scoring position out at second base. Brandon Lewis started the inning off with a double to deep left center field. Ready to go, the pitch on its way. Fastball misses outside ball three. Three balls and no strikes here to Domla. A walk doesn't kill you necessarily. However, it does give options for UC Irvine. And this is where you might see maybe some small ball played by the Anteaters. Rotano on deck and the 3-0 pitch. Misses outside ball four. And now there'll be runners on at first and second. Nobody out. We'll see if Eric Matson makes a move. Schultz seems to be fatiguing a little bit here in his seventh inning of work at 110 pitches. He's a pitch, he has pitched very well this afternoon. Joe Orloff, the head coach for UC Irvine, is the NCAA leader in sacrifice bunts as a player, holds the all-time record. So the idea would be is that he favors the sacrifice bunt because he holds the record, but however, don't let that fool you. He's gonna play to the strengths, and we'll see here what he wants to do with Rotano. Eric Madsen out to have the conversation. No signal yet. Yoakum kind of standing there like he's ready to come, and now the whole infield will come in for the Wolverines. And we'll see here if Eric Madsen decides he wants to stick with Paxton Schultz here. The batter will be Rotano, a right-handed hitter, so it'll be interesting to see if Madsen goes with Jesse Schmidt who doesn't seem to be quite ready yet. We'll, we'll see Matson taking a long time out there and Blake Jensen's gonna head out and break this meeting up. So it looks like Eric is sticking with Schmidt and he is. So with nobody out, it will be Matt Rotano, the DH to come to the plate. Rotano is 0 for 2, a pop out, a fly out and a walk. And now we'll see exactly here what they want to, to do with this one right here. He was a 2018 All Big West honorable mention as he stands in. Ready to go on the pitch. Bunt shown pulls it back there and steps out of the way as that one came up and in for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Rotano, two time All League, All Big West in baseball. Two-time All-League in football in high school, blocked nine kicks. There, showing some of that athleticism to get out of the way of that one coming inside. 1-0 pitch, bunt shown again, pulls it back and takes it for ball two. And it's two balls and no strikes on Rotano. Well, it may seem obvious, but Schultz needs to throw a strike here. Rick. Rotano is trying to give you an out. 
take it. Kate Poulsen charging hard from first. Makes me wonder if Utah Valley is going to try and see if they can cut down the lead run over at third. There's the bunt down the third baseline. Coming in, Madsen, he'll throw to first. Throws a strike over to Cody Hall, and there's one gone. That does move the runners up 90 feet, however, to second and third with one out, and that will bring up the catcher, Jacob Castro. That's a nice bunt, but it's a very nice play by Madsen, charging and gloving it, you see there, going to the bare hand on the run. So now, UC Irvine does not need a base hit to tie this game, as Eric Madsen's going to come out and make the change. Let's see if he goes with the left-hander. He does. It's going to be Cole Yoakum coming out of the bullpen for the Wolverines to face the left-handed hitting Castro. So a huge moment in this game. Schultz heads to the clubhouse for the Wolverines. They are hanging on to a 2-1 to lead. We'll be back after this. Here at Intermountain Healthcare, our doctors have experience treating young athletes, professional athletes, and the athlete next door. We treat everyday injuries, sports injuries, concussions, total joint replacements, and everything in between. Come visit our board certified physicians and surgeons here at Intermountain Healthcare's Utah Valley Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. We're committed to keeping you moving. Eyes on me. I'm Mark Pope, coach of the UVU men's basketball team. I want to thank Carlos Iglesias and Ken Garf Volkswagen for being a great friend of Utah Valley University Athletics, basketball, volleyball, and everything else. Thanks, coach. We're proud to support a great program like Utah Valley University Sports. We wish the Wolverines a fantastic season. You can thank Carlos, too, by visiting their new dealership today, Ken Garf Volkswagen. We, we hear you. Cole Yoakum, the new left-hander on for the Wolverines. He enters the Wolverines leading two to one, runners at second and third for UC Irvine. You see Cole Yoakum's numbers there. This will be his seventh appearance. He's thrown eight innings. He has allowed seven earned runs, struck out two, walked four. Opponents are hitting 219 off of him. So Yoakum has had trouble at times this season and he enters in a big spot in this ball game. It'll be interesting to see here. It will be a lefty versus lefty matchup with Jacob Castro. And you have to kind of wonder if Jesse Schmidt uh, throwing for maybe the guy on deck in Christian Koss. Indeed, you do have two right-handers after Castro. As we'll get the numbers on Schmidt's day in just a moment. He is on the hook for both runners on base here as Paxton Schultz has pitched well today for Utah Valley. Infield will come in for the Wolverines. Castro at the plate, ready to go. The left-hander, Yoakum, on the mound from the stretch. First pitch on its way is going to be sent foul down the left field line onto the berm for a long strike one. No balls and a strike to count here on Castro. Castro had earlier in this season a pitch, a pinch hit, go ahead RBI double. Off the first pitch he saw, there he sends this one foul and it's 0-2. That was one of his first, first pitch in his NCAA de debut against Nevada back on February 17th, I think that was a year ago. Not a bad way to start your career, but here in a different clutch situation. Runners on at second and third, one out, and the 0-2 pitch on its way, called strike three. Cole Yoakum throws him at the knees there for a strike three, and there's two away here in the seventh. And you can't overstate the importance of that strikeout as you see a perfect 0-2 pitch right on the outside corner, knee high, and Yoakum, who has struggled at times this season, comes in and gets the first man he faces. That is huge. Well, here's Christian Koss, the shortstop, to stand in with two away. And part of the reason that is so important is your infield can now move back. Takes a little bit of some pressure off and increases that reaction time they have. And the first pitch, Koss rolls this one to third. Madsen up with it, fires across the diamond in time to get Koss. And the top of the seventh comes to an end. 
And you see Irvine threatens again, but Cole Yoakum shuts the door in the seventh. It's 2-1 lead for Utah Valley here on Go, UVU.com and UVU TV. Here at Intermountain Healthcare, our doctors have experience treating young athletes, professional athletes, and the athlete next door. We treat everyday injuries, sports injuries, concussions, total joint replacements, and everything in between. Come visit our board certified physicians and surgeons here at Intermountain Healthcare's Utah Valley Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. We're committed to keeping you moving. Nice crowd filing in here today to the UCCU ballpark as right there a 2-1 lead for Utah Valley. That image there doesn't quite <laughs> sound up the size of crowd that's here for a Saturday afternoon of baseball as there's some Utah Valley fans enjoying some sun here as top of the lineup coming up for Utah Valley, Michael Beltran, Cody Hall, and Alexander Marco as Jordan Botko ready to come home and his first pitch to Beltran is going to be sent back the other way to center field. Taking a few steps back is Thalia who runs it down and with one pitch there's one out here in the seventh. And so now we'll bring up second baseman Cody Hall. You mentioned how good Botko has been. You mentioned Ryan. He has not given up a hit since February 26th. That was at LMU. He has not given up an earned run this season. Giving up just one run overall. Ready to go, the right-hander. Baco comes home in the first pitch. Misses low for a ball. One ball and no strikes to count. Baco, the active leader in games pitched for this UC Irvine club. Ready to come home. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That one's bounced over to short. Koss up with it, throws across the diamond in time, and there's two away. Two gone, here's Alexander Marco, who's two for two today. A home run, a single, and a walk. And if you can kind of get maybe Alexander Marco to settle in well in that three spot, can set up well for Utah Valley offensively. The Wolverines have been in need of some offense this year. Today are leading two to one over UC Irvine here in the bottom of the seventh. Pitch on its way home. Strike in there at the knees. No balls and a strike on Alexander Marco. Game three of this series tomorrow afternoon, a noon first pitch here at UCCU Ballpark. 0-1 pitch on its way home, and Marco rolls this one foul. We'll be back on GoUVU.com and the WAC Digital Network tomorrow. That one to wrap up the weekend series have an off day Monday and then we're back at it again Tuesday night for BYU and the Cougars roll into town the 0-2 pitch about ready to come home Baco ready kicks and comes in and Marco fouls this one back do it again no balls and two strikes here on Alexander Marco looking ahead for UC Irvine in the eighth it'll be Brendan Brooks Mike Peabody and then Jake Palmer eight nine and one coming up for UC Irvine. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Baco taking his time, time called, and Marco will step out of the box. If Baco can get Marco here, it'll be the first time either club has been retired in order in this game. Fastball on the inside corner, missed for a ball, and it's one and two. The Wolverines have left seven men on base. UCI has left 12. The Utah Valley pitching staff has really come up with a couple of clutch outs when one of those kind of maybe game-changing type moments where last night it was the other way around. The pitch, Marco rolls this one foul back to the backstop. He'll stay alive here. The importance for Utah Valley, they would love to get a little bit of an insurance run either here in the seventh or in the eighth, just to, just to give them a little bit of a safer cushion. 
Not going to be easy, though, against Baco. The one-two pitch, fastball misses off the plate, ball two, and the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. The other guy that you might see, this gets interesting, you may see Taylor Rashi. I don't know if they would want to throw both their back end arms today in case they need one tomorrow. But both Baco and Rashi have been kind of splitting time in the closer role. There's Marco as he pulls it foul down into the Utah Valley bullpen. Yeah, they've both been so good this season for the Anteaters. That's why it's so important that the Wolverines got that two to one lead before facing the back end of this bullpen. Here's the 2-2 pitch, about ready to come home to Marco. The wind and the delivery on its way. Marco gets under it, lifts it well out into left field. It's in the ballpark for Palmer, but it's going to fall deep into left center field. Marco will head into second with a stand-up double with two outs. Well, that ball just kept carrying. Not a lot of wind here this afternoon, but I'm not sure if Palmer or Felia really got a great read off that right off the bat as we take a look at Marco sending that one out to left center. Now let's see here, that's a high fly ball to toward the deepest part of the yard, but I don't think either one of them really saw it all that well. Palmer playing more towards the line here later on. Palmer may have gotten there, Jordan, if he was playing where he was last night. He probably runs that down pretty easy. But yeah, they had Palmer stationed practically in left center field last night. Here's Drew Sims with two outs. The Utah Valley catcher swings the first pitch, grounds it deep in the hole. It's going to be bobbled by Koss, and Sims will reach. Koss tried to reach down with his glove, and it just had it hit off the heel and just kind of roll away from him there. And Sims will reach, and I would imagine here what, what they're going to rule out. That's going to be... The only reason why I'm thinking of potential error is if he feels that cleanly, he might have gotten Sims. Drew Sims, not an overly great runner. We'll see right here. I don't know if they've made an official decision yet. And it looks like they're going to give him a base hit right there. Deep in the hole. I guess still for Koss having to throw across his body, that would have been a tough throw. Here's Mick Madsen, takes the first pitch, low and outside for a ball. You know, they give him the hit there, Ryan. I would give him, I think that's a tough hit because Sims is such a slow runner. I think he still would have had time to get him if he had fielded it cleanly. So a big spot here for the freshman. And here's the 1-0 pitch coming home to Mick Madsen, and he swings and lifts this one well to center field, sending the center fielder back, still going back, reaches up, it's over his head. One run will score easy. Sims is going to get the green light around third. Madsen's heading for third. The throw to third to get Madsen is not in time as the ball skips away from a third baseman, and Mick Madsen giving Utah Valley the clutch run support they need, and now they lead 4-1 to one here in the seventh. Oh, what a huge triple for the freshman. You got to feel great for Matson coming up big time. As you see him doubling to dead center field off Jordan Baca, one of the best relievers in the Big West. And Felia just could not get to it. That ball was absolutely crushed. And there are some insurance runs for Utah Valley. Felia there, a good center fielder who runs well. That ball just elevated in the strike zone. That one, a breaking ball, low and away to Kate Polson for ball one. It's one ball and no strikes the count. And the nice thing is if you're Utah Valley now, that gives you an opportunity to have some runs to play with here a little bit. Not that you want to really make this one interesting. However, Cole Yoakum in the, bottom, in the top of the eighth inning doesn't have to worry about making a mistake and tying the ball game. Pitch on its way. Polson grounds this one to second. This should be it for the seventh. Fielded cleanly the throw to first by Brooks, and the inning's over. However, Mick Madsen provides the damage. A two-run triple to center field, and at the end of seven, it's 4-1 Utah Valley on UVU TV. Oh, hey, you got one of those insurance apps too? You know how this thing works? No, oh, sorry. Not an app, it's my agent. In this moment, no, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Auto owner's insurance. 
the no problem people. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU athletics. They say the devil is in the details. And in here, there are a lot of details. Flavor, color, texture, temperature, presentation. It all has to be flawless. Pressure? Maybe. But with Engage Learning, I get a lot of practice. And I'll bet your homework never tasted this good. Top of the eighth inning here at the here at UCCU Ballpark in Orem, Utah. On the left-hander, Cole Yoakum, after coming up big in the bot in the top of the seventh, while well, the bats behind him in the bottom of the inning came up with a big couple of runs for the lefty, who now has an opportunity to face eight, nine, and one Brooks, Peabody, and Palmer. A couple of lefties in that group. As Jesse Schmidt continues to warm up down in the Utah Valley bullpen, you see him there behind the action in your picture. And now here with the eighth and ninth innings here on UVU TV, it's Jordan Bianucci. Jordan, we're setting up for a nice eighth and ninth inning hopefully here for Utah Valley. Indeed we are. UC Irvine will certainly not go down quietly as a fastball misses up high, ball one to Brooks. Well, Mick Matson with the huge, you, you cannot overstate that two-run base hit as the 1-0 is in there for a called strike. When you put it in context of how badly the Wolverines have been struggling this season, it, you can really exhale as Brooks lines this foul on a check swing. It's one and two. Just the idea that here's a guy that probably doesn't get the start Usually, Paul Estrada is probably in that spot and just steps up and gets a, just gets the timely hit. The 1-2 is grounded sharply to shortstop. Trevor Howell scoops it up, throws to first. A nice stretch by Polson, and there is one away. And you're exactly right. As Paul Estrada, the starter, the senior last night, was hit by a pitch. So he is out today with a sore wrist. And that, the freshman, Mick Matson gets the start in front of Estrada, and he comes through with a huge two-out triple in the bottom of the seventh inning. We're in the top of the eighth right now. Four to one, Utah Valley. Speaking of guys who have come through, Yoakum has faced three hitters. He has retired all three. First pitch is in there for, for a called strike to Peabody. And really with as well as Paxton Schultz pitched today, Jordan, you'd really like to see Schultz get on the positive side of one today. He has not had a win this season. The 0-1 misses down and away. Peabody singled in the Anteaters' lone run back in the second inning. Lefty versus lefty here. Here's the pitch. The ball misses down and away. Two and one. Yoakum, the left-hander, set with the bases empty. Fastball misses up high, and it's three and one. A few Wolverine fans in the stands wanted that. Called a strike. Blake Jensen, the home plate umpire, says no. Ball three. UC Irvine needs base runners, so Yoakum needs to come in here. And he pours in a fastball, three and two. If you're Yoakum, you can afford to give up a home run. Worst case scenario, you do not want to give up a walk with a three run lead. 3-2 pitch is swung on and lined into right field. Base hit. A fastball that Peabody sends into right. And there's a man on with a man out. Peabody's second, third hit of the ball game. I beg your pardon. Stayed on that pitch. So here is Palmer, another left-handed hitter, looking for his second hit of the game. He is one for three. He also walked back into second. Jesse Schmidt is ready in that bullpen. The right-hander should the Wolverines go to him. Polson holding on the runner. The pitch to Palmer misses inside. A fastball at 87 miles an hour, and it's 1-0. and Palmer hitting 261 coming into this game. The 1-0 pitch to him. 
Fastball misses down and in. 2-0. and the Middle infield, double play depth. Let's take a look at that 1-0. Pretty good call, missing down and in, but close. We've seen Blake Jensen give the outside corner, not so much the inside corner this afternoon. A ball in the dirt is smothered by Sims, and now it's 3-0. and And if you're Yoakum, you really don't want to walk Palmer because that brings the tying run to the plate. You want to make him beat you with the bat. Playing deep in right field is Marco. Against the left-handed hitter, the 3-0 pitch in there for a called strike. Yoakum gets the low strike call, 3-1. 4-1, to one, the Wolverines leading. We're in the top of the eighth inning, a man on, a man out. With Polson holding on the runner, there's a big hole on that right side. Should Palmer pull? There's a fastball missing outside, ball four, and the tying run will come to the plate for UC Irvine. So a single and a walk, and here's a right-handed hitter, and I think that's going to do it for Yoakum. As Eric Matson takes the long walk out to the mound, he is not yet made the call to the bullpen. I don't know if you're going to want to go lefty versus righty with Falia being the hitter with the series he's had. And now he makes the call and Yoakum's day is done. So it'll be Schmidt coming in from the bullpen for the Wolverines. UC Irvine will have the tying run at the plate. UVU leads 4-1. to one. We'll be back. I decided to go to college to further my education and define my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself, both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone, whether that be professors, my teammates, or other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell, and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it. New pitcher on for Utah Valley. It's the right-hander, Jesse Schmidt. Uh, Schmidt making his fifth appearance. He's 2-1 and one on the year with a 2.57 ERA, one save. He's gone seven innings, allowed three hits, three runs, two earned. Three walks to nine strikeouts. Opponents hitting a buck 25 off the right-hander. And not an easy way to start as he'll have to face Mikey Falia, who's having a pretty good series for the, for the Anteaters. Went deep in last night's ball game. However, today he's one for four. So an opportunity here if you're Jesse Schmidt to have to work through part of this lineup, but it will not be easy, Jordan, uh, having to face two, three, and four, Felia Lewis and uh, uh, Domla. No, and you mentioned Felia hitting the home run last night, his first of the season. If he could get one out of the park here, it would tie the game. Palmer at first. Peabody at second. The Wolverines with a three-run lead. So Schmidt, who has pitched really well this season, comes in. The first pitch, breaking ball misses down and away. The last time we saw Schmidt, it was Monday against Niagara. Went three innings, gave up a run. No earned runs, though. Three strikeouts. That is a game the Wolverines won. Here comes the 1 0 to Lewis, or to Falia, I beg your pardon. Fastball, this is outside, and it's 2 0. That game on Monday, Jesse Schmidt was the Wilkinson's trophy player of the game. Well, he could use a ground ball here. To get out of this inning. Top of the eighth, two on, one out. There's a fastball in at 85 miles an hour. Called for a strike, it's 2 and 1 to Thalia. Thalia hitting just 192 on the year. 
The 2-1 pitch to him. A swing and a sharply hit ground ball foul, and the count is even at 2-2. Two and two. So Falia out in front there on the 87-mile-an-hour fastball. Schmidt not a hard thrower. We've already seen that curveball from him in the high 60s. We'll see what he goes with here. Two and two. Schmidt peers in, now comes set. The 2-2 pitch, a swing and a drive into left center field. Plakis going back, looking up, it is off the wall. One run will come in to score, two runs will score. Thalia heading for third, he will get there with a triple. Four to three, UC Irvine, and the tying run is at third with just one out. And Thalia nearly hit that one out of the park. Hit it to the deepest part of the yard, off the wall. And just like that, the Utah Valley infield will have to come in. Both Palmer and Peabody score. So now, Lewis does not need a base hit to tie this game. Schmidt set. Now he takes time. And I'm kind of surprised in a way here, Jordan, that Utah Valley is going to even pitch to Lewis with the night he had last night. He's been hitting the ball hard in the series. First pitch curveball is a beauty. Taken for strike one. I know you wouldn't want to put the leading run necessarily on the base paths, but I don't know if I want to necessarily face, take the chance with Lewis when I got uh, Domla on deck. I think I might just put Lewis on here. Yeah, Domla, though, has hit well this season. The 0-1 pitch is swung on and grounded to third. Matson knocks it down. He's going to come home. The tag is in time. They got him at the plate. Mick Matson making a big time play at third. Falio was going on contact, and he's thrown out by quite a few feet. That was not a close play at home. And this is exactly why, Jordan, I'm in the booth and not a baseball coach there because that's a nice job there. They do a nice job with Mick Madsen making sure he keeps the ball in front of him and then remains composed, doesn't hurry. Sometimes you'll see infielders feel like they have to hurry and make an inaccurate throw to the catcher, Drew Sims, but there just throws a strike, puts it nicely where Sims can just apply the tag. So here is Domlo with a man at first base. First pitch, curve ball, called for a strike on the outside corner. Boy, Mick Madsen has really made some nice plays today. With the bat, with the glove, freshman doing it all. Polson holding on the runner at first. He represents the tying run. Four to three, Utah Valley, the pitch. Fastball misses outside and it's one and one. Domla has walked three times today. Grounded out in the first inning, 0 for 1 officially. And how big is that Mick Matson double now? Knocking in the two runs in the bottom half of the seventh. The 1 1 pitch, curveball misses inside. It's 2 and 1 to Domla. I think that also gets Paxton Schultz another no decision uh, today, which is tough. But nonetheless, Paxton Schultz did what you wanted him to do keep us in the ball game, give us a chance to win, and that's what Schultz did today. Domla, a straight up stance. The pitch to the lefty is swung on and grounded through the right side, base hit. Heading for third is Thalia, or excuse me, is Lewis. He'll make it a single for Domla. And UC Irvine will not quit. Not a terribly hard hit ball, but past the diving Polson. As you take a look here, just a chopper, but Polson could not quite get to it to his right. Now runners on the corners for Ritano. And again, that tying run is 90 feet away. The designated hitter will come up with two out. Schmidt set, trying to work around these base runners. First pitch curveball stays up high, ball one. Ritano, a right-handed hitter, is 0 for 2. He 
laid down a sacrifice bunt in the seventh inning. The 1-0 to him. Fastball catches that outside corner. I say a fastball, that was a changeup, and it's one and one. Two men on, two men out in the eighth. Four to three, Wolverines. The one one pitch from Schmidt, here it is. Fastball misses away. Two and one. Schmidt working quickly. The 2 1 pitch. There's the breaking ball right there on the outside corner, taken for strike two. Schmidt with the long brown hair coming out the back of his cap. Now bent at the waist, peers in. Two balls, two strikes, the count to Ritano. The pitch. A swing and a chopper toward third. Matson to his left, throws to first, and the Wolverines get out of it. Schmidt. Gives up the two-run triple, but the Anteaters do not score. To the last of the eight, Utah Valley four, the Anteaters three. the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Chevrolet. I promise you'll love it. Before you even think about buying a new truck or SUV, you've got to check out MurdochChev.com. You'll be glad you did. We've got huge discounts on all 2018 models, and you're going to love the 2019 Silverado. Only at Murdoch Chevrolet in Logan and Woods Cross. You've, you've got, got to come and see us. us. Four to three, Utah Valley, as we head to the last of the eighth inning. For the Wolverines, it will be Plakas, Hayes, and Howell, bottom third of the order. Well, the Wolverines. Lived dangerously in the top half of this inning. Ultimately gave up two runs. First pitch to Plakis in there for a called strike. The right-handed reliever, Jordan Baco, back out there for his third inning of work. Plakis walked in his last plate appearance. He is officially 0 for 1. He swings and misses, and it's 0 and 2. In the ninth for UC Irvine, it will be Castro, Koss, and Brooks. Six, seven, and eight do up. Castro, a left-handed hitter. The two others right-handed. The pitch to Plagueis. Breaking ball misses down in the dirt. Ball one. Well, the Wolverines, pretty impressive that they scored two runs off Baco. Who has not given? Who had not given up a hit since February? And so good out of that UC Irvine bullpen. The one-two pitch. Plaka swings and misses, and there is one away. Well, you got one of those insurance apps too. Third strikeout for Baco, and here is Hayes. It's good to know. Hayes, the designated hitter, singled back in the fourth inning. He is one for three. He was the first man that Baco faced in the sixth, and he struck him out. So Hayes seeing him for the second time. First pitch fastball is hit sharply on one hop to second base. Brooks has it. Throws to first after playing the high hop, and they're quickly, quickly two away. That's a very nice play there by Brooks there because you kind of saw that last second adjustment on the hop there. That just took some really, watch the spin right there, right in the last, whoa, hello, and then just able to somehow come up and grab it. A nice job there by Brooks there. That could have easily been uh, just a, a, a base hit there for Pace and Hayes. Yeah, well hit ball off the bat. Here is Trevor Howell. 
Swinging and missing, strike one. Howell struck out facing Baco back in the sixth. Howell doubled and scored a run in the third. The Wolverines led two to one for most of this game before putting two more on the board in the seventh. UC Irvine answered back in the top of the eighth with two. As Howell fouls went off to the right, it's nothing and two to him. Four to three, Utah Valley leading here. Last of the eighth inning, base is empty. I'm sure it'll be Jesse Schmidt on the mound for the Wolverines in the ninth. The 0-2 coming to Howell. Baco winds and fires. Fastball misses off the plate outside. The Anteaters were headed to the dugout. Because Blake Jensen has called pitches that have been a little bit off the outside strikes today. Did not get that one. Howell hitting 181. He swings and rolls one foul on the third base side. Howell has led off most of this season for Utah Valley. Beginning last night, Eric Matson put him in the ninth spot. He's been swinging the bat a little better today. I mentioned that double in the third inning. He's also walked. He is one for two on the afternoon. The one-two pitch from Baco. And a ball misses down and away. 91 mile an hour fastball from the right-hander and it's two and two. Howell has no home runs, just two RBIs this season. Base is empty, two gone. Baco with the 2-2. A swing and a ground ball to second. Another high hop handled by Brooks goes to first and the inning's over. So last chance for UC Irvine. We head to the top of the ninth inning. Utah Valley with a one-run lead here on UVU TV and GoUVU.com. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from DNA analysis to animal behavior, there is a place for you at UVU. A place to rise, to engage, to succeed, to become. Eyes on me. I'm Mark Pope, coach of the UVU men's basketball team. I want to thank Carlos Iglesias and Ken Garth Volkswagen for being a great friend of Utah Valley University Athletics. Basketball, volleyball, and everything else. Thanks, coach. We're proud to support a great program like Utah Valley University Sports. We wish the Wolverines a fantastic season. You can thank Carlos, too, by visiting their new dealership today. Ken Garth Volkswagen. We, we hear, hear you. you. So here is Jesse Schmidt taking his warm-up tosses, top of the ninth. The Wolverines with a 4-3 lead. It'll be Castro, Koss, and Brooks for the Wolverines. And we're going to start with a pinch hitter. It's going to be Zikafus come in. We saw him last night get a couple of plate appearances. A left-handed hitter, Zikafus last night went 0 for 1. He did score two runs. So Schmidt who came in last inning gave up two hits. The pitch to Zikafus is in there for a called strike one. The 0-1 pitch a swing and a high foul ball, high and off to the left, and it's quickly 0-2. Or right, Zikapu's rather in 28 at bats this season, has just four hits, no home runs. The 0-2 pitch, ball in the dirt. Not a great 0-2 from Schmidt there, an easy take for Zikafus. I believe Zikafus was an all-conference guy last year for 
you see Irvine. So definitely that potential there. He might just be someone getting off to a slow start. He's a big guy. The one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. One away in the ninth. First strikeout for Schmidt. And Zikafus is gone. The breaking ball, the curve ball. A good downward break there. And the bases are empty with one out. Here is Christian Koss. Koss was hit by a pitch in the second inning. Otherwise, he is 0 for 3. He checks his swing at the first pitch and appeal down to the first base umpire, Mike Reimer. He did not go around on a breaking ball in the dirt. 1-0. and Koss does have two home runs this season, but he has struck out 20 times. Close stance from the right side. Schmidt from the windup, the 1-0. Curveball right there, strike one. Four to three, Utah Valley, top of the ninth. The 1-1. One, one. Ooh, a ball just misses up high. An off-speed pitch, and it's two and one. Here's the 2-1. Two, a swing and a base hit into left field. It'll two hop in front of Plekis. And he'll fire one into second, keeping Koss at first. But the tying run is on base for UC Irvine in the ninth inning. And right there, just Koss not trying to do too much, just trying to find a way. He kind of shortens up his swing there a little bit, just enough to make contact. And now the tough part is Jordan Koss with good speed. He's one of the big stolen base uh, threats here on this UC Irvine team. I don't know. I don't think he'll try to steal in this case, but... Um, just keep an eye on it. He's got good speed over at first. Well, Jesse throws over there, and this would certain be a, certainly be a situa situation in which you would take off. Poulsen holding him on. A good-sized lead. Here is Brooks, and Schmidt throws it over to first base, and it gets by Poulsen. Into the bullpen, and now heading around second, heading for third is Koss. And now the throw comes in to home. Unbelievable. Jesse Schmidt throws it away. That'll be an E1. And now you put the tying run at third base with less than two outs. The one thing there, that's that's the worry that you come. That throw there just up the baseline. Cape Polson trying to trying to get there, but the tough part is Cade polson has got a base runner there that he has to worry about and has to give a lane to, so there's just not much you can do as a first baseman right there. So now the infield has to come in. Here's the pitch to Brooks. Fastball misses outside, ball one. Nobody up in the Utah Valley bullpen. That is just a self-inflicted wound. If you're Utah Valley, the 1 0. Curveball catches the outside corner, strike one. Brooks, if he just lifts one into medium deep out the outfield, this game will be tied. The Anteaters have out hit the Wolverines 10 to 8 today. 4 to 3, Utah Valley, one out in the ninth, a man at third base. The 1 1 pitch, a ball misses way outside. Sims sliding to his right, keeps it in front of him. And now it is 2 and 1. UC Irvine's going to get Taylor Rashi up in their bullpen down there just in case they need him, maybe for the bottom of the ninth. The 2 1 pitch. A swing and a pop up into left field. This will get the job done. Plakis is under it. He makes the catch, tagging at third and coming in to score is Koss, and we are tied up 4 to 4. So Brooks gets the job done. That is the second out of the inning as you take a look at the fly ball. A nice job by Brooks picking up RBI number seven on the year. And here is Peabody. Jake Plakis there making the catch. I think there was a couple of Wolverine fans that wanted to see Plakis at least make a throw through. And I think Jake Plakis kind of knew as Peabody will get hit by a pitch. Now the leading run on over at first. Yeah, one gets away from Schmidt, and so now 
That go-ahead run is on, and here comes Eric Matson. We're going to have a meeting on the mound. This is the last visit Matson will be allowed through nine innings today. The third and final visit. No one up in the Utah Valley pen. This one is up to Jesse Schmidt. So now the order turns over. You'll face Palmer with the go-ahead run at first and two outs. Palmer has walked twice. He is single. He's also struck out and grounded out. One for three officially. Peabody has stolen two bases this season. He has not been caught. He is at first. So this inning started off benignly enough. Zikafus struck out, but then Koss singled. And the big error, Jesse Schmidt trying to pick off Koss threw the ball away down the right field line. Koss took third, Brooks hit a sacrifice fly. And Schmidt will blow the save. Now he's just trying to keep it tied. This is your guy, Paul, let's go. Here is the left-handed hitting Palmer. The pitch to him, the runner takes off. The throw down by Sims is bounced, and it gets into center field. Taking third, Peabody is 90 feet away. Another error. This one coming by Sims, the second error of the inning from the Wolverines. And you bounce that pitch, but if you're, or I mean that throw, but if you're Howell behind or you're Hall covering, you have to stop that. You got to get in front of that throw. You have you have two Wolverines right there. Fastball misses up high, 2-0 and now. And and neither one right there are able to keep that one from going into center field. And the tough part is, Jordan, now, I mean, you put a ball past Sims. There's a variety of different things now where now you're going to go to the bottom of the ninth, potentially trailing. The 2-0 pitch. Fastball misses up high, ball three. The Wolverines came into this top of the ninth with a 4-3 lead. It is now 4-4. Four four. The go-ahead run at third base. Two outs, 3-0 and to Palmer. Thalia is on deck. The 3-0 pitch, fastball just catches the inside corner. Palmer looked to be taking all the way. It's 3-1. and one. The outfield is deep and straight away all around. The 3-1 pitch coming from Schmidt. Here it is. And he walked him. Ball four inside. So now runners on the corners. So... That is the 29th pitch, or I beg your pardon, the 34th pitch that Schmidt has thrown. Now this is second inning of work. Seven, Mikey Here's Mikey Falia. Falia was the first man Schmidt faced last inning coming into the ball game, and Falia tripled off him. And now a right-hander, Romeo Carrillo, will get set, or get loose, I should say, in the Utah Valley bullpen. Palmer at first, Peabody at third. Here is the pitch to Falia, and a fastball misses high and away, ball one. And Jesse Schmidt, I don't know if he's being a little too conservative with what he's throwing right now, or he just can't seem to find the strike zone. The 1-0 misses high and away, not close. 2-0. And, and Schmidt's gonna take a walk. Trevor Howell is going to come in from shortstop to have a meeting with him. Two mound visits left from the Wolverines' perspective from defensive players. No mound visits left for Eric Matson unless he makes a change. Valia hit a home run last night. Came into the ballgame batting just 188. 2-0 pitch to him. Fastball misses high. Above the belt, 3-0. Should Falia reach, it would be Lewis. This is the heart of the UC Irvine order. 3-0 pitch. Not close. High ball four. Bases are loaded. And if you're Eric Matson, I don't know how much longer you can stick with, Je stick with Jesse Schmidt. He can't find the strike zone right now. And the bases are loaded for the right-handed hitting Lewis. 
Well, and the tough part is you have to face a very good hitter with lots of power in Brandon Lewis, and there's no place to put him at this point. I mean, so now if you're Jesse Schmidt on the mound, you're going to have to come over the plate, and hitters love to hit strikes. I mean, that's what they want to that's what they want to swing at just as much as the pitchers want to get strikes. So here's Lewis hitting from the right side. Sims is going to take time out, and Eric Matson is going to come to the mound. He's going to make a change. He'll go with Romeo Carrillo, the right-hander, coming in. For Utah Valley, a brutal situation. Bases loaded, two outs in the inning. So Jesse Schmidt is unable to get the save. He gives up the one run to tie it here in the ninth. He is on the hook for the other three. Here comes Carrillo in from the pen. This game is tied at four. We'll be back after this. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. New pitcher on for Utah Valley. It will be the right-hander Romeo Carrello on the year. Carrello uh, making a sixth appearance. 0-0 zero zero record with a 4.05 ERA. He's gone six and two-thirds innings for the Wolverines. Walked three and struck out five. And not an easy situation. The bases are full of ant eaters, and you got Brandon Lewis coming to the plate. And right now, Jordan, I don't know if you're a right-handed pitcher out there, but you're probably feeling a a little bit of some stress here, probably looking maybe to pitch to contact and hope for the best. Yeah, if you're Carrillo, you don't have much of a choice. You have to throw strikes. Bases loaded, two outs. Tie game. Top of the ninth. UCI with one run already in this inning. They've out hit the Wolverines in this ball game, 10 to eight. But it has been two errors in this inning that have been large for the Wolverines. The pitch from Carrillo. This is up high, ball one. Breaking pitch. Carrillo with a long hair coming out the back of his cap, peers in, working from the stretch. The 1-0 coming to Lewis. Here it is. Fastball, down low, ball two. Sims wanted a strike there, but Blake Jensen said no, and now it's 2-0. We'll see if Lewis has the green light. Lewis with an open stand, stance from the right side. Came into the ball game batting 316. The 2-0 pitch. A swing and a high fly ball into right. Marco back in front of the track. He will make the grab, and Carrillo comes up big. He keeps this game tied. UCI has left 17 men on base today. We head to the last of the ninth, tie game, four to four. Utah Valley will have the top of the order here on UBU TV. It doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. Well, we talked earlier in the ball game as we come back to the bottom of the ninth inning, tied at four between UC Irvine and Utah Valley. We talked about the, how great that back end of the bullpen 
was for UC Irvine. We saw Botko today. Well, now we're going to see Taylor Rashi. Rashi on the year 0-0 zero zero with no ERA. He's gone seven appearances with five saves. 7.2 innings, one hit, no runs, one walk, and 14 strikeouts on the year. And so right now, UC Irvine definitely showing how important this game is to the Anteaters to try to win this series by throwing two of their back-end arms in situations where you may not normally see them. And it won't, you know, be interesting for the Utah Valley Batch. You'll see Beltran, Hall, and Marco coming up. Hey, tie game. This is why you have the bullpen if you're Ben Orloff. This is a prime time for Baco. And Rashi, you mentioned right now how great they've been this year. I just don't know if you would like to use them necessarily unless it's this important in a tie ball game. But oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think this is exact. that's exactly right. This is when you want them in there. First pitch misses outside to Beltran. Ball one. Beltran 0 for 6 in this series. Or excuse me, 0 for 8 in this series. He is the Wolverines has been the Wolverines' best hitter in 2019. The 1-0 to him. A swing and a high foul off into the right. It's 1-1. One one. Beltran with an average of 333. No home runs. He has, does have three triples on the year. A fast runner. So any way he can get on would benefit Utah Valley. Tie game, bottom of the ninth. Base is empty. Nobody out. The 1-1 one one pitch. Swing and a foul tip. A curveball from Rashi and it's one and two. Hall is on deck, Marco in the hole. The Wolverines trying to win this in walk off fashion. They committed two fielding errors, two throwing errors specifically in the top of the ninth that aided UC Irvine in tying the ball game. The one two from Rashi. A swing and a foul back to the screen. Fastball at 87 miles an hour and the count remains at one and two. The center fielder, medium deep and playing Beltran toward right center field. The right fielder, Peabody, he's playing shallow. Beltran with an open stance from the right side. Rashi peers in, working from the windup. Here's the one-two pitch. Fastball misses up high, and the count's even at two and two. There is a giant gap in left center field should Beltran pull the ball. You, you see it there. Great shot. Of that left field alleyway. The 2-2 pitch to Beltran. Here it comes. Rashi taking a long time. Now he kicks and fires. Curveball swung on, line down the left field line. Foul. About five feet foul. Beltran just missing extra bases. The count remains at 2-2. Two two. All right-handed hitters for the Wolverines in the lineup today. Their big left-handed hitter, Ryan Eastburn, still nursing an injury. He is day-to-day -day right now. The 2-2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on an 86-mile-an-hour fastball. On the outside corner, Beltran is down swinging. As you look at that fastball, Mazur, who is the new catcher, he wanted that pitch down. It was elevated, but Beltran couldn't catch up to it. Here is Cody Hall. Hall singled in the Wolverines run in the third. That gave him a two to one lead at the time. It's a little bloop in the left center field. Ball misses away. Fastball from Rashi and it's one and oh. No home runs for Hall on the season hitting 262. Here's the one oh. A check swing, a little pop up in foul territory, but it's going to fall. Foul to the right of the first base coach's box where Joldy Watts is. It's one and one. Four to four, bases empty. We're in the last of the ninth inning. Rashi trying to get this game to extra innings. Wolverines trying to win it in walk off fashion. The one one pitch. Fastball. This is inside, and it's 2-1 and one to Hall. Alexander Marco is on deck. 
He has a home run in this ball game back in the first inning. One out. Rashi from the windup. Here comes the 2 1 pitch. A swing and a ground ball to third. On one hop, Lewis has it, throws to first, and there are two away. So base is empty for Alexander Marco. He may try and end this one with one swing of the bat. Should this go to extra innings, no one is up in the Utah Valley bullpen. It would be Carrillo heading back out there. He would face Damla, Ratano, and Zikafus. Right now, base is empty, last of the ninth. Two outs for Marco, the pitch to him. Curveball. Misses inside, ball one. That may have been the slider from Taylor Rashi. The third pitcher this afternoon for UCI. The closer for the Anteaters. Here comes the 1-0. Marco swings and chops one foul on the third base side and counts even at one and one. Rashi, six feet, four inches tall, 216 pounds out of Torrance, California. A transfer from El Camino. One ball, one strike to count. Rashi peers in. Here comes the pitch. And he pours in a fastball at 88 miles an hour. Called for strike two on the inside corner. One ball, two strikes to Marco. Marco with two hits this afternoon. Three hits, I beg your pardon. Three for three with a walk. Trying to get a pitch to hit here. One and two the count. Ball in the dirt. Curveball missed, and it's two and two. Good take from Marco. Righty versus righty here in the ninth. Sims is on deck. Four to four our score. The outfield deep all the way around. Ashy peers in, now the 2-2. And the ball misses down and in, full count. 88 mile an hour fastball there from Rashi. Marco steps out, adjusts his batting glove. Three and two, here it comes from Rashi. A swing and a ground ball. Through the left side, base hit. Past the diving cost and into left field. The shortstop did all he could. But Barco, stay hot. He has his fourth hit of the game. You see on the TV side, him just pull that outside pitch. That's He's in danger of rolling over on that, but he was able to sneak it through that 5.5 hole. And when it's going well, it is going well. For you, Marco, the winning run at first base. Here is Sims. He singled and scored a run in the seventh. Right-handed hitter. The pitch to him. Inside lined foul down the third base line. He went and got that one. Pitch that was buried deep down and in. Marco at first base has not attempted to steal a base this season. He is held on by Domla. The outfield playing very deep, trying to guard against the extra base hit. If one is hit in the alleyway, Marco might be able to score. The one strike pitch coming to Sims, here it is. Breaking ball in the dirt, a nice job by Mazur to smother it and keep Marco at first, one and one to the Wolverine catcher. Sims does have one home run on the season. The winning run at first. Two outs in the ninth. Rashi into his stretch, set at the belt. The 1-1. One, one. And a fastball misses outside. And it's 2-1. and one. Yeah, Sims' lone home run on the year came in, in that Fresno State series. He had a solo home run in the top of the ninth inning. Utah Valley was able to shut the door in the bottom of the ninth inning to win that one. We're in the last of the ninth here. 4-4 four four the score. Winning run at first. Marco a very short lead over there. The 2-1 pitch coming to Sims. Here it is. A swing and a pop-up. Shallow right field. Sprinting in his Peabody, but it's going to be Brooks, the second baseman. And the inning is over. He makes the grab.
The Wolverines get a hit. They leave a man left. We're headed to extra innings on Utah on Go UBU and UBU TV. Four to four the score. Extra innings on UVU TV and GoUVU.com. Four to four, our score. Carrillo back out to pitch the 10th for the Wolverines. We have a winner in the Dalma Juice Rally Cap Family Game. It will be Dalma, Ratano, and Zikafus. Four, five, and six for UC Irvine. The Wolverines had a four to three lead going into the ninth inning but the Wolverines just weren't able to hold it right yeah and you know that's going to happen sometimes but it kind of seems like when you're playing when you're playing baseball and where things just aren't going your way it seems like that has a tendency just to roll night in and night out until you get one to go your way so we'll see here what Utah Valley can do in the 10th here's the left-handed hitting Dalma Domla I beg your pardon taking a ball outside he has been on base four times this afternoon he singled in the eighth inning the 1-0 pitch. Carrillo misses outside, ball two. Well, if you're Carrillo, you gotta throw strikes. And that was the part of the problem for Jesse Schmidt in the ninth. Had a tough time throwing strikes as now Howell will come in and have a visit. And Ryan, I don't know if you know, but there I I don't know the answer to this question is there are new rules this year in 2019 with mound visits and coaches' visits, but in extra innings, I don't know what the new mound visit rule goes to, because the Wolverines are out of coaching visits. Might be maybe one in inning or something. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe like overtime in college basketball where you get the additional one time out. We may find out as Carrillo misses outside ball three. And he's in danger of walking the leadoff man. Domla does have three walks today. He's a very patient hitter. So here is Carrillo, the pitch. Fastball right there on the outside corner, strike one. And UC Irvine's been very patient at the plate in the series. If you're, if you're willing to walk them, they'll take the walks, and those walks have really come back to hurt Utah Valley. 3-1 pitch coming. A swing and a base hit up the middle. A pretty good pitch from Carrillo in on the hands, but Damla muscles it into center, and the leadoff man is on for the Anteaters as a right-hander, Matt Dahlke, will start to get loose in the bullpen. For Utah Valley, as you see, Damla taking that one up the middle. So now the right-handed hitting Rotano, a designated hitter. We'll see if he lays down a bunt or swings away. He laid down a nice sacrifice bunt back in the seventh inning. The Wolverines have played one extra inning game this season. It was at UC Davis, a game they won 11-9 in 10 innings. There's a strike to Ritano. He did not square around. 0-1 to him. The Wolverines have led for most of this game. UC Irvine has not led. We are tied at four in the tenth. A man on, nobody out. Carrillo with the 0-1. The a swing and a chopper up the middle. It's going to sneak its way into center field. And the runner's going to try and take third. Beltran's throw is not going to be late, and the back runner will take second. A disastrous play for the Wolverines. Aggressive base running by Domla, and it pays off big time. Beltran did not think Domla was going to try and take third on that. He was a little slow coming up with that ball in center, and it hurts Utah Valley. And really, it's one of those things. I'd rather have you get to the ball quickly and make the throw in quickly and just prevent that from even being an option because now that extra 90 feet here, as you'll see what Jordan's talking about on the TV side here in a minute, Beltran comes up and Domla just goes for it immediately. 
and just takes a big chance right there. First pitch to Zikafus, misses down and away. Ball one. And I beg your pardon, I say Zikafus, this is Mazur who came in defensively for Zikafus in the bottom of the half of the ninth. The 1-0 pitch, up and in, 2-0. Mazur has had just five at bats this season. He is 0 for 5. So the infield in for Utah Valley. Two men on, nobody out. Mazur does not need a base hit to score a run here and to give the Anteaters the lead. The 2 0 pitch from Carrillo. In the dirt, blocked by Sims. And you want to go after Mazur just because he is 0 for 5 this season. First base is open, so a walk isn't the worst thing in the world in this case. But like Jordan said, when you have the guys 0 for 5 at the plate, it's an opportunity to potentially get a quick out. 3-0 pitch, not close, down and away, and the bases are loaded. Matt Dahlke still warming up in that Utah Valley bullpen. He's a right-hander. So here is Koss. Koss came into the ball game hitting just 231. However, he singled in the ninth. He was the man to get the rally going, and he eventually came around to score that tying run last inning. Base is loaded, and here comes Eric Matson. We'll see if he makes a change here. Carrillo had the bases loaded in the bottom half of the ninth inning and was able to get out of that jam. Eric Madsen's going to bring the everybody in on the infield, and we are going to have a change. So just stalling a bit, and Dalkey will come in for Carrillo. Bases loaded, nobody out in the top of the 10th inning. Tie game here in Orem. We'll take a break on Go UVU and UVU TV. It'll be Dalkey in from the bullpen. We'll be back after this. I hate math. I can't count how many times I've heard people say that. And as a math teacher, I take it personally. So, while working on my master's at UVU, I developed ways to help kids not hate math. Does engaged learning make a difference? You do the math. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Hyundai. I promise you'll love it. Get more vehicle for your dollar from Utah's largest Hyundai dealer. Drive home a new 2019 Hyundai Tucson for only $199 a month, or you'll love the new Elantra for only $13,990. Go ahead and compare at MurdochHyundai.com. You gotta come and see it in Logan, Linden, and Murray. Eric Madsen came out, made a pitching change. It will be the right-hander Matt Dalkey coming in. Dalkey one and one on the year, making his eighth appearance. He's made two starts for the Wolverines. He's gone eight and two-thirds innings, allowed 19 hits, nine runs, all earned. Uh, two walks and five strikeouts. Opponents hitting 463 off the right-hander, who will come in here in a big spot. Bases loaded, nobody out here in the tenth. He's going to get uh, Christian Koss who will come to the plate here. He's a highly touted shortstop for UC Irvine. He had a great summer uh, playing bait up in the, um, played baseball up in the West Coast League, up in the, up in Oregon, Washington, that part of one of the summer collegiate leagues up there. And so he's a highly touted prospect that UC Irvine's excited about and a lot of major league teams are looking at him in the draft, potentially uh, in the upcoming June draft. So not an easy hitter for Matt Dahlke, Jordan. Indeed. Matt Dahlke's last appearance was brutal. He went one and a third at, uh, against Niagara. Gave up seven hits and six runs. So he comes in here with the inflated ERA just because of that outing. Otherwise, otherwise he has been really good this season. 
And like you said, Ryan, you will face Koss. Bases loaded, nobody out. Certainly a strikeout situation if you're Dalkey. The infield comes in for Utah Valley, so if they get a ground ball, they will come home with it. 4-4 four to four our score, top of the 10th. Koss, that closed stance. He singled, scored a run in the ninth. That tied the game. Dalkey peers in, the right-hander bent, bent over at the waist, comes set. The pitch, a swing and a ground ball to the shortstop. How he dives, has it, and he comes up with it, and he drops it. He had a shot at the runner coming home, but as he got to his feet, the ball slipped out of his hand and landed on the infield grass, and UC Irvine takes a 5-4 to four lead. Made the hardest part of the play very cleanly. Just lost it, it looks like, kind of on the transfer between the glove to his hand, and right there, a, a tough break for Utah Valley. And now the bases are still loaded, nobody out. Here is Brooks. So Dalkey got the ground ball, and Howell, you mentioned, right, he made the tough part of the play. A tremendous job diving, getting it, but just couldn't squeeze it as this ball is knocked down in the dirt by Sims. And they're going to give an error to Howell on that play. <laughs> that That's another tough error for Trevor Howell. He had one earlier, but it was changed to a hit later on. This fastball comes in up and in, nearly hits Brooks. And it's 2-0. and oh. Brooks had the sacrifice fly in the ninth inning that tied the game. Trying to lengthen UC Irvine's lead, their first lead of the game. Dalkey set, here comes the 2-0. And it's outside, a slider that wasn't close. Now it's 3-0. The bases are loaded, nowhere to put Brooks. Haas at first, Mazur at second, Ritano at third. Brooks, you have to think, would be taking all the way here. Here comes the 3-0 from Dalkey. And it's down low, he walked in a run. So 6-4, UC Irvine. Ritano comes in to score. Second RBI for Brooks. Base is still loaded. Nobody out. Biggest thing here for Utah Valley, you know you're heading into the bottom of the of the tenth, trailing and needing runs. But Jordan, if you let UC Irvine put up a crooked number here, it just kind of buries you in this position. One or two, you know, with the way you've played offensively, you've been able to find a way to get one or two. But anything more than that, it's going to make it tough in the bottom. The pitch hits Peabody. Breaking ball got away from Dalkey. That means another run will come in to score. It is 7-4 UC Irvine, and the wheels are coming off here in the 10th inning for the Wolverines. So that's the second consecutive time that Peabody's been hit today. And that turns the lineup over. Here is Palmer. The bases are still loaded. Nobody out. A left-handed hitter, Palmer, has walked in his last two plate appearances. Jordan, I, I don't know if you know how many walks and hit batters UVU's allowed today. 14. Wow. And, and that's and that's a back-breaking number, especially against a team like UC Irvine that can swing the bats. And here, there's still bases full, nobody out, and a lot of action starting to go in that Utah Valley bullpen. The pitch to Palmer misses outside, ball one. And what did Dave Carter say to us, the associate head coach for Utah Valley, before the game? He said, you cannot defend against the walk or the hit batter. And his point being that those are just gifts. At least if you give up hits, you can defend against that. The 1-0. There's a strike from Matt Dalkey, a much needed one. And it's one and one. A righty and a lefty throwing in the Utah Valley bullpen. They trail seven to four, we're in the top of the 10th. Bases loaded, nobody out. Here's the one one to Palmer. He swings and fouls one back to the screen, a fastball in on the hands and it's one and two. 
That's Mason Gray and Logan Pettit warming up. We saw Gray pitch pretty well Monday night for Utah Valley in a starting role against Niagara. <laughs> Donkey peers in. Sims drops the sign. The one-two pitch on the way. And he throws it. I don't know how that didn't hit Palmer. It came down and in. And it's two and two. A nice job by Sims to backhand that pitch and keep it from going to the backstop. Peabody at first, Brooks at second. Koss at third base. A ball misses down and in, and it's three and two. So now Dalkey has to throw a strike. He's Walked one man with the bases loaded, and he hit the next one. So Doggy just does not have the command right now. He was ahead of this batter. Palmer has battled back. The 3-2 pitch. A swing and a foul down the left field line. Palmer has walked three times a day. He singled back in the fourth. He's also bounced out and struck out. He is one for three. Here we go, full count. And a ball misses down low. Another run will be walked in. And it is eight to four, and this one has been opened up. Eric Matson has seen enough. Dalkey will head to the clubhouse, a tough outing, and a tough 10th inning for Utah Valley. It'll be the right-hander, Mason Gray, coming in for the Wolverines. We will take a break on UVU TV and be back after this. Utah Valley trailing 8-4. to four. Eyes on me. I'm Mark Pope, coach of the UVU men's basketball team. I want to thank Carlos Iglesias and Ken Garf Volkswagen for being a great friend of Utah Valley University Athletics. Basketball, volleyball, and everything else. Thanks, coach. We're proud to support a great program like Utah Valley University Sports. We wish the Wolverines a fantastic season. You can thank Carlos, too, by visiting their new dealership today. Ken Garf Volkswagen, we, we hear you. There is so much to celebrate in life from the smallest of hands to the victories of youth and precious occasions with family and friends, sharing unforgettable moments. Continue accomplishing your goals and celebrate success at Utah Valley University. Apply by August 1st for fall semester. New pitcher on for Utah Valley, the right-hander Mason Gray will come in. Mason Gray's made two starts this year. He's got no record with an 8.68 ERA. He's gone nine and a third innings in those appearances, allowed six hits, nine runs, all earned 11 walks and six strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 188 off the right-hander who really is coming off of a really nice outing the other night against Niagara where he went six innings, allowed two hits, one run, did walk four and struck out five, but really maybe had a coming out party, Jordan. But here, I don't know if you're Utah Valley, if you just don't tell Mason Gray, just throw it over the plate and let him hit it, and hopefully you get a ball hit, hit right at somebody because trying to pinpoint accuracy has not been the strength of Utah Valley here in the tent. Felia will be the hitter. A swing and a high deep fly ball to left. Plakis on the track looking up, grand slam. Felia has his second home run of the series and this one all but clinches it for UC Irvine. It is 12 to four, an eight run 10th inning. Well. Felia was sitting on that pitch. So one pitch, and Gray gives up the grand slam. And this is the dangers of what I was talking about. If you do throw it over the plate and let him hit it, potentially this happens, and Felia goes yard. But, I mean, it's it's tough when you get in these 
position than you have someone come in fresh out of the bullpen, no outs, and the bases loaded, it, it can be hard not to give up a run or two. So here Lewis hits one high and deep to center. Beltran going back the deepest part of the yard. He makes the grab a step in front of the uh, warning track out there, and that is the first out of the inning. That was the ninth man to come to the plate in this 10th inning. So now Dalma, Damla, I beg your pardon, will come up for the second time. He singled to start this 10th. The left-handed hitter. Gray throws, and there's a shot into right field past the diving Polson. And Domla has his second base hit of the inning. This one was hit much harder than his first one, which was grounded back up the middle. So Rattano will come up, and there's a lefty still getting loose. I, is that Pettit down there in the bullpen? It is. For Utah Valley. Now a pinch hitter will come up. It's going to be Sam Ireland. He will hit for Batano. The pitch to him comes up and in. Ball one from Gray, and it hit him. The home plate umpire, Blake Jensen, says that caught his sleeve. So another free pass given by the Wolverines. And there are runners on first and second, still just one out in the inning. Here is Mazer. Mazer came in as a defensive replacement in the last of the ninth. His first at bat in this game was earlier in this inning. He walked and ended up scoring a run. Ball misses up high, and it's 1-0 and to him. Mazer, we mentioned earlier, just 0 for 5 this season. Did score a run in this inning earlier. That was his first run scored this season. First and second, one out in the 10th, 12-4 to UC Irvine. A ball misses down and in, and it's 2-0. and So this may not end up looking like a close game in the box score, but it was. And the Wolverines were two outs away from winning it. There was one out, and the base is empty in the bottom of the ninth, and UC Irvine staged the comeback. The 2-0 misses down and in, 3-0. and Think of it, Utah Valley has been in that position a couple of times this year, down to their final out in a game against South Carolina, and the Gamecocks had a walk-off two-run homer to win it. They had a lead in the, I think, bottom of the eighth inning to BYU a couple of weeks back. They had this one, and that switches things. That was a 1-1 tie, but 3-0 misses down and in. He walked him, and the bases are loaded. There are some of those games, Jordan, though, that if you if a couple of things go differently, instead of 3-14, and 14, then you're, you know, 6-11. Six and, six and 11. While that doesn't sound much better, Eric Matson's going to make another pitching change here in the 10th, but while that doesn't sound much better, that at least maybe gives your team a little more confidence here as we'll see uh, Logan Pettit come in here for the Wolverines. That'll be the third pitcher in this 10th inning for Utah Valley. We'll take a break. 12-4 UCI on UVU TV and GoUVU.com. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? It doesn't matter your situation in life. No matter your interest. Whether your first choice or second chance. There's a place for you. Place for you. Place for you at UVU. Place to engage, to rise, to succeed. To become.
Well, the left-hander Logan Pettit on for the Wolverines. Pettit, Pettit the left-hander, will come in. He um, doesn't have a record yet this year. He's got a he's got a high ERA with four appearances, six and two-thirds innings, nine hits, seven runs all earned, three walks and two strikeouts. Opponents hitting 333 off the left-hander. However, Logan Pettit came in, I believe, in that game against Niagara and really did a, a pretty good job. So he's coming off of a good outing, Jordan, earlier in the week against Niagara in a tough spot. Still not an easy spot, though. Base is full of ant eaters, one out, and you got to deal with Christian Koss. Yeah, Christian, Cro Christian Koss, the right-handed hitter, stepping in. Pettit, the lefty, working from the stretch. Base is loaded, one out, the pitch. Fastball in there for a called strike. Utah Valley trailing 12 to four in the 10th inning. You see Irvine has scored eight runs in this inning. And blown this one open. The one strike pitch coming from Pettit. The corners, or the first baseman, Polson playing in on the grass. That one is swung on and fouled back to the screen and it's nothing in two. Haas reached on a fielding error earlier this inning. He also came around to score. That was the hit that put UC Irvine ahead, or the ball that was put in play, I should say. It was a hard hit ball that Howell dove to his left, made the stop, and then just dropped it coming up out of his crouch, ready to, or out of his dive, ready to throw home. The 0-2 is swung on and chopped towards second slowly. Howell's going to backhand a second. One run will come into score as Howell did not have time to turn the double play. And it's 13-4, two outs in the inning. Domla scores. Everybody else moves up. Ireland is at third. Toss at first. So here is Brooks, two on, two out. Pettit kicks and fires. There's a strike on the outside corner, and it's 0-1. Brooks walked with the bases loaded earlier this inning. He scored. The curveball misses up high. It's 1-1. One and none. One and one. Between walks and hit batters in this inning, the Wolverines have given six free passes in this inning. The 1-1 one, one coming from Pettit. Here it is. A swing and a high drive. That one's headed for midway. That is out of the ballpark. A three-run home run for Brooks. And now it's 15-4. 16-4, I beg your pardon. You know, what's crazy, Jordan, is UC Irvine has left 17 men on base, but that was just a no doubt about it. Fastball down the middle, elevated, and, and Brooks didn't Brooks didn't miss it. And that's out in pretty much any ballpark that I know of right there. And, I mean, this is what UC Irvine's been able to find a way to do in this series is they've been able to capitalize on what Utah Valley's given them. He was sitting on one, and you said he gave that one a ride. That is his fourth homer of the season as Peabody takes a ball down low, and it's 1-0. and A 12-run 10th for the Anteaters. The 1-0 pitch misses down and in from Pettit, and it's 2-0. and And you feel for these Utah Valley pitchers who have just struggled so mightily here in this 10th inning, the 2-0. There's a strike given by Blake Jensen. It's two and one. Peabody was hit by a pitch earlier this inning. That came with the bases loaded. Two one. In there for a called strike and it's two and two. Base is empty here in the 10th inning. 16 to four UC Irvine. This is a game that, U that Utah Valley led for most of it. Until this inning, 2-2 two -two misses up high, and it's 3-2. That's kind of hard to believe. It seems like a long time ago. 
Well, if you go back, I mean, you go back an hour ago or so, we were talking about Utah Valley being down to, you know, two outs away from taking this from this game and adding and tying the series. That one comes inside and hits, hits Peabody, and that's his third time, third consecutive at bat that he's been hit by a pitch to go along with three singles. He's been aboard six times today. Now As right now, you take a look at it, back to the top of the lineup with Jake Palmer. Palmer has, uh, has four walks on the day, has scored two runs, and Palmer now ready to face the left-hander here in Pettit. Pettit will work here from the stretch, checks the runner and comes home, and Palmer takes a strike on the inside corner. And it's 0 one on Palmer. Ryan, the Wolverines today have walked 14 batters and hit four. 18 free passes. I don't do you, I can't recall a game where that's happened. We've we've had some games in the time. I mean, you're you're on your 11th year, 10th year, and I'm on about my fifth or sixth. And I don't recall a day a game like this where the Wolverine pitching staff struggled. Now a ball gets away from Sims. He has no idea where the ball is. It's over by the on deck circle on the first base side, heading to second, then to third is Peabody. And right there. The dugout, the pitcher, Polson, you got to help out your catcher. Let him know where that ball went to. And by the time they realized where it was, Peabody was at third base. So a wild pitch, I believe, will be ruled. Palmer, the left-handed hitter, hitting for the second time in this inning. Fastball misses up high from Pettit, 2-1. and one. Pettit, the freshman out of Boise, Idaho. I believe he went to Centennial High School. A man at third, two outs here in a disastrous 10th for the Wolverines. There's a foul back to the screen. And it's two and two. And the tough part is with everything that's gone on in the 12th here in this 10th inning, what you don't really remember is the positive things that Utah Valley did today. You know, the, the Madsen triple at the time to give Utah Valley a 4-1 a, a lead in the seventh inning isn't even in the forefront of your mind anymore. 2-2, two, two. check swing, did he go around? He did not, and the count is full. Palmer one for three on the afternoon, an RBI, two runs scored, four walks. That's what you want from your leadoff hitter. Get, find ways to get on base, and that's what Palmer's done today. 3-2 is hitting to left center field. Plekis going back. It is off the wall. Into second is Palmer. Another run comes in to score. It's 17-4. Second RBI of the inning for Palmer. And Falia will come up. It was Falia who put the exclamation point on this inning with a grand slam, as you see. Palmer's double. That ball, yeah, one hopped the wall out there. The 13th run to come in here in the 10th. Pettit peers in, he throws. Fastball misses down and away to Falia. And Falia, who came into this series really having a slow start to the year, has hit a couple of home <laughs> runs and a couple other things in this series. You wouldn't really have known that his batting average coming in was as low as it was because he swung a really hot bat here in the series. The 1 0 -oh fastball catches the outside corner and it's 1 and 1. And now Cole Hostert will head down to the bullpen and get. Warm just in case. Pettit has to be relieved. The 1 1 pitch. Fastball misses away. 2 and 1. This game is almost four hours, it's three hours and 40 minutes old or so, and the shadows are starting to creep over the first base line and into the batter's area, so it's going to get difficult to hit to see the baseball the longer this game goes on. 
17 to four, UC Irvine leading in the 10th, the pitch. And a ball misses away, three and one. And I'm trying to remember a time when we'll, have we seen the Wolverines give up more than 13 runs in an inning? I can't remember. I, I've only been of course, as, I, of course I blocked out those memories as far as I can remember I only remember one game here where I saw that happen and it was a high school state tournament game between Salem Hills and and Maple Mountain and Kate Polson UVU's first baseman was on the field during that game and Salem Hills had like a 12 or a 13 run second inning 3-1 pitch misses inside ball four I'm sure that doesn't bring back great memories for Kate Polson but that's the the highest scoring game I've seen in one inning in this ballpark. Number 23, Brandon Lewis. Here is Lewis. He will come to bat. He is the 18th man to hit in this inning. The 18th, 1-8. First and second, still two outs. Lewis flied out to deep, deep center field as Pettit is having a tough time finding the strike zone right now. Ball one misses away. Part of me just wonders if you have some some pitching that some pitchers still learning confidence and, and stride in their stuff at the college level because it seems like when, when there's nobody on base, they can hit the strike zone. But once you get some base runners, the 1-0s popped into left center field and Beltran's under it and the inning finally ends for the Wolverines but a disastrous 10th UC Irvine scores 13 runs and blow this one wide open they lead 17 to 4 we head to the last of the 10th on GoUVU.com and UVU TV did you know that over 43 million Americans struggle with mental health problems annually 43 million that's one in five adults did you know that there's one death by suicide in the United States every 12 minutes did you know that suicide takes the lives of over 40,000 Americans each year? Over 40,000 mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, and friends. Did you know that you can help reverse this trend? If you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness, don't keep it to yourself. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Chevrolet. I promise you'll love it. Before you even think about buying a new truck or SUV, you've got to check out MurdochChev.com. You'll be glad you did. We've got huge discounts on all 2018 models, and you're going to love the 2019 Silverado. Only at Murdoch Chevrolet in Logan and Woods Cross. You've, you've got, got to come and see. New pitcher on right now for UC Irvine. Looking at it right here, I believe it's number, I'm seeing 43 on the mound. And that, I don't have a 43 on my roster. That's not good. <laughs> it's a new left-hander on for UC U. And it is number 43, but we don't have a 43 on I'm, the roster. I'm looking I'm looking over to see who 43 is. I'm going to try to look at our counterparts. It's going to be number, it's actually number 40, 26, now, wearing 43. Number 26, I'm wearing 43, Darius Garcia. Darius Garcia coming in. Garcia, no record on the year, a 4.50 ERA, making his third appearance. Seven, two Matthews. innings, two hits, one run, one walk, and three strikeouts. So the left-hander will face McMatson. The pitch to him, a fastball, misses up high, ball one. Well, the Wolverines give up 13 runs in the top of the 10th inning. And they trail 17 to four, and the energy is out of this ballpark. Here's a ground ball to shortstop, costs up with it, throws to first, and there's one away. That's and here comes Polson with a man on or a man out and nobody on. Ah, that kind of inning will just deflate a club and a uh, and a ballpark. When you take a look at the energy that was here after Madsen's triple to to center field, it was an exciting energy, a lot of uh, excitement in the ballpark, and now it's just like there's nobody in the yard. Polson swings and fouls one off on the first base side. Zero and one. And that's the way it has gone for the Wolverines. And 
2019. Just a tough beginning to this season. Game three of this series will commence tomorrow at noontime. We'll have it for you on GoUVU.com. The one strike pitch from Garcia. Strike on the outside corner, and it's nothing and two to Polson. Polson 0 for 4 this afternoon. He's grounded out all four times. Garcia, the left hander. The two strike pitch misses down and in. Ball one. He is a freshman out of Cerritos, California. 5'8, 175. From the windup, the one two misses high and away, two and two. Well, Utah Valley led for most of this game. They led into the top of the ten or led into the bottom of the ninth, I should say. They had one out and the base is empty, and then everything went awry. The two two pitch, a swing and a little bloop into right. Coming in is Peabody. He was playing shallow, reaches up, makes the grab, and they're two away. So last chance for the Wolverines, it'll be Plakas. And the ninth, bottom of the ninth. The pitcher was Schmidt. It was Jesse Schmidt on the mound. He struck out the first man he faced, but then gave up a single. Eventually that man came around to score on a sacrifice fly. There's a foul tip into the glove of Mazer. It is 0-1. And then the floodgates opened in the 10th. Garcia taking a while. Now he winds and fires. Fastball in there for a called strike. 0-2 to Plakas. Plakas swings and lines one up the middle, a base hit. It's the first hit of the afternoon for Plakas. And there's a man on in the bottom of the 10th. Now Garcia, the last time he pitched was on February 24th at Rice. Went one inning, walked one, struck out one. Now hitting number 24, Payson Here's Payson Hayes. Hayes. Hayes singled back in the fourth. He is one for four. <laughs> Garcia into his stretch. The left-hander throws. A swing and a miss. That ball at 77 miles an hour. Maybe a change up there from Garcia. And it's 0-1. He's a right-handed hitter. Hitting just 175 this season. Three for 26 at the plate. A swing and a high foul off into the right. And it's nothing in two. Seventeen to four, UC Irvine in charge in the last of the tenth inning. Two outs, a man at first base for Utah Valley. UC Irvine about to clinch their fifth straight series victory. The 0-2, swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that's the ball game. Utah Valley loses this one to UC Irvine. The Anteaters explode in the 10th with 13 runs. They win it 17 to four. We will take a break on UVU TV and go UVU. Come back with our brief post-game commentary. After this, Utah Valley drops this one to the Anteaters 17 to four. We'll be back. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from DNA analysis to animal behavior, there is a place for you at UVU. A place to rise, to engage, to succeed, to become. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool too. Yep. 
When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now. With the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. Really welcome everybody back to UCCU Ballpark here in Orem, Utah, where UC Irvine uses that 13-run 10th inning to get a 17-4 victory this afternoon over the Utah Valley Wolverines. Here, Ryan Pickens alongside Jordan Bianucci as we welcome everybody back to UCCU Ballpark. And it was just one of those games, if you're a Utah Valley, where there was times when it was looking really good, where the Wolverines kind of looked like, hey, they might have maybe put last night behind them. They got some offense going, which I think if you're head coach Eric Madsen, offensively, you'll be happy with what you got, especially with that. But it was the pitching staff tonight. Paxton Schultz did a great job. He is our Wilkinson Trophy player of the game. Paxton Schultz goes six and a third, allowed six hits, one run, which was earned. Did walk six and struck out five, but Paxton Schultz at the time really kept Utah Valley in the ball game. With 41 years of experience, Wilkinson's Trophy is your place for awards, screen printing, embroidery, and name badges. Check out selections online at wilkinsonstrophy.com. We'll bring in Jordan Bianucci and, and Jordan here. We're going we're to take a look here at some final highlights here. Some final thoughts from you today, Jordan. Yeah, let's just take a look at the final totals. UC Irvine with 17 runs on 16 hits. The Wolverines with four runs on 10 hits, three errors. The Wolverines really had a chance to win this one. They led for most of the game, but they ultimately drop it after a huge 10th inning from UC Irvine. For Ryan Pickens, I am Jordan Bianucci saying so long from UCCU Ballpark. Utah Valley drops this one 17-4 to UC Irvine.